On today's part of my take, we have March Madness recap. What a four days we just witnessed. It's been crazy. It's going to be a loopy episode. Our brains are full of basketball. We also have uh, Jack Golke and DJ Burns, two of the heroes from the first four days. NC State still marching on. They beat Jack Golke's Oakland, but he also captured the hearts of America when they took down Kentucky. Uh, who's back of the week, and it's going to be a great show. We're going to put it together. We've been watching nonstop basketball together. We're going to do it, and it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any co- college basketball bet. Uh, we got the lines already out for the Sweet 16 Bama UNC is going to be an incredible matchup. We got Tennessee Creighton, some great games coming up on Thursday and Friday, and DraftKings Sportsbook has it all. And all three North Carolina teams have advanced. Raise so up, North Carolina listeners! Don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. NC State, Duke, North Carolina. All in the Sweet 16. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours with DraftKings Sportsbook. Go check it out right now. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Take. Today is Monday, March twenty fifth, and my head is full of basketball. My eyes have been burning for four days. I feel like I've gained fifteen pounds. I've had a headache nonstop, but God damn it, was that fun! I've had two bites of vegetables since Thursday. Yeah. Two bites a lot. I have not had. Yeah, just because of the wedding. Early course, you get the asparagus, took a couple bites of that. I haven't. That's it. I've had had candy on candy on candy, and we just watched basketball for four days straight. And I feel great, though. I feel great. I I will say this uh, for you people listening right now. I would throw this out there maybe Monday after Super Bowl, and then Monday after the first weekend of March Madness, two worst Mondays in the calendar year. Your body just craves day basketball. You're just sitting there like, what do I do with the rest of my life? Basically, you're you're basically red or no Brooks getting out of uh, Shawshank, and you're like, this sucks. Yeah, I want to go back to just sitting on a couch with my boys watching hoop. Yeah, if you want day ball, by the way, look at Big Cat's blog on the coach's picture. Yes, which we can talk about a little bit in a a little bit. I'm going to be up till four in the morning tonight. That's fun. That's a nice little like uh, wind down after a weekend of ball. But yeah, it was it was a great time. The games weren't that competitive over the weekend. Um, well, let's but de- it's, it's still a lot of basketball. Let's debate this before we, we go through the games and talk about all the storylines. There's the, we, we do this as sports fans. We have to say, well, this March Madness has been great or this one has sucked. I've seen both arguments. I'm firmly in, yeah, I wish there was less blowouts, but what this March Madness is setting up, it's actually exactly what I want. A few upsets in the first round, some shocking moments. You get a Jack Golke, you get a Yale beating Auburn, you get these weird things happening, but then you get the best 16 teams in the Sweet 16, and you have, I know it's chalky, but we have matchups that are so, so great, and I don't want to get to the Sweet 16 and have like a 13 seed who's going to lose by 20 to UConn. Yeah. 30 to UConn. We got some blue bloods in there. We got a and, national and, title rematch. Yeah. UConn and, and San Diego State. And the one Cinderella that's still in there is a Cinderella that we can all focus on in NC State. Also, not a Cinderella anymore because they just keep winning. They're, I think yeah. they went from Cinderella to just team of destiny. Like, they, there was a moment when NC State, in that Oakland game, they went in overtime and I'm like, why can't can't they just win it all? Yeah, they're good. They're like legit good. The two DJs and then Diara, 
They got some players. Who's fasting for Ramadan, which is nuts. Is it so they're the new UConn? Yeah, he's he has not been he's not been eating during these games. That's and he, they've played seven games in twelve days. That's really impressive. I don't think I'd be able to watch basketball without eating. No, much less play it. Definitely not. I sh- I sit on that couch. It's like Pavlov's dogs. Like, what are we eating for today? Oh, we had lunch two minutes ago. Let's talk about dinner. Uh, yeah, we're- we've, we've got we've got solid matchups in the next round, and also a shout out to the ACC. Mm-hmm. The ACC. What are they? Eight and one in the tournament. The one loss being UVA in, UVA. The, fir- in the first four. Well, the Big East also undefeated. Big East undefeated. Big East is undefeated, 6-0. and oh. Big East Probably back. should have put more teams in from the Big East. Big East is back. Well, yeah, UConn had Northwestern and Stetson. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, we got some really good matchups coming up next weekend. Oh, and so exciting. I'm pumped about that. I would have liked more close games, maybe yeah. with the same results, but more close games. But all in all, like, yeah, it was a, it was a weekend well spent. I don't yes. Wanna, I don't want to be second-guessing my weekend, and the fact that the very last game or second-to-last game was the Houston A&M shocker that went to overtime yeah that was incredible that's a good way for me to like wash a little bit of the stink of the blowouts out of my mouth yeah so the the um yeah i i don't like it the years when we get to sweet 16 and we have multiple 13 14 you know 15 st peter's that was a great story but then you get st peter's went all the way to the elite eight correct you get yeah, Cinder- they Purdue and they lost 16, by like yeah. forty UNC to UNC. By 50, yeah. Right, you get Cinderella. Duke, UNC. You right. get Cinderella fatigue. We can we can channel all of our Cinderella energy into NC State now, which is nice. Yeah. Usually, when these double digit seeds lose, they lose in big fashion. Right. Like they mm-hmm. just completely run out of gas. Right. So uh, I, I'm I'm very excited with this tournament. I'm excited with what we've watched. Uh, where do you want to start? Let's start on Friday. Oh, okay. That's it. We usually go in chronological order. That's fact, true. Fact or fiction. Yeah, we do. On the show. Okay, so I didn't really watch much of the games because I was flying and then I was at dinner, but I did see one game. Yes. James Madison, Wisconsin. James Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin played like fucking ass. Jamie, you played like fucking uh, good ass. Like a really yeah. good ass. No, I that was torture for me. It was a torturous game. It was, they, they played uh, just horrendous. I, I don't think they knew what JMU was all about. It felt like they showed up and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just win this game. Oh, yeah, JMU is going to pressure us on every possession and we'll just not be able to handle the pressure. They were not ready for the fight. The fight was brought to them. They were not ready for the fight. Uh, why are you pulling up the box score, Max? I, I was just curious. I was looking. Uh, yeah, but it sucked. It sucked. and I, I was. It was torture for me. I hated every second of it. As you get older – it's weird because you think that these games should m- matter less as you get older and have perspective, but I was thinking about it because I was so mad at myself, so sad on Friday night, and I realized that they, in a weird way, matter more because as you get older, s- your teams keep some, you know, your friendships alive, and all my college friends who I'm still very good friends with, like we watch it together and we talk about it, and then like to have that performance and that. Just disgusting. I would have lo- rather have lost on a buzzer beater than the way that Wisconsin went out because it was so pathetic. Um, and then it's got me questioning everything with the direction of the program and everything. So, yeah, you had fun. I had torture. Yeah, I, I had a pretty good time. It was a great night. Uh, Wisconsin, I would say they weren't ready for the defensive pressure, but also Wisconsin would have been – I think they would have been better if the game had been played on, like, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, when no, they, we, when they were on a roll in the Big Ten tournament. Well, what, and then they had to take a couple of days off, and they kind of reverted back. They were Jekyll and Hyde all year, and they, and what happened in the Big Ten tournament just pulled me back in, and I knew that was going to happen, and it just mm-hmm. it it just pulled me right back into being like, oh, maybe this team will hit all their shots and they'll be great, and they were not, and uh, yeah, it sucked. AJ Store was bad. Wall was not good. It was the last game, like just sucked. Everything sucked. Yeah, we had a great game. Our big three showed up. Uh, it was an electric atmosphere inside the Barclays. They yeah. Said, it's the, the loudest that it's been inside the Barclays, which when you look back at the history of teams that have played there, yeah, you had the Nets for a little bit, and then you have, what, the A-10 tournament? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the be- the biggest night in the history of the Barclays in terms of crowd noise, it was a blast. What was up with the guy behind you that you told to shut the fuck up? Well, I, he needed to shut the fuck up. <laughs> And so I told him to shut the fuck up. I have a lot of practice to shut the that? fuck up because of you, Hank. I know. Show. It was yeah. good, it was good yeah. to see that and not be on the receiving end of it. Yeah. Uh, so basically what happened was Max, myself, 
uh, my friend Brian that I went to JMU with, and then Rosillo met up with us. Rosillo pulled a, a rookie mistake. He was trying to watch Vermont Duke. With a Cardinals hat on. With a Cardinals hat on. Uh, and he saw that picture. I was like, just Rosillo. I didn't, That's Rosillo. I didn't even ask. I him. love him. But I didn't, I didn't, que- I didn't question it. I just, I was like, <laughs> okay, Brian's here, whatever. But he, he made a rookie mistake. He bought tickets for the early slate. Oh no. Thinking he was going to get all the games. And then you don't get all. The and games. then he got kicked out. And yeah. then, uh, then he had to be like, Hey, is there an extra ticket? Yeah, we got you, Ryan. So Ryan was watching the games with us and the guy behind us started running his mouth a little bit right after we got out to an early start. Cause Jamie, you came out pretty hot. And he was like telling me to sit down, called me a, a C word, like the Australian C word. And, uh, and I was just like, this guy needs to shut the fuck up. And I was about seven or eight cocktails deep at the time. Uh, so I just, I let him have it. And then after I said that to him, we reached like a mutual respect thing mm-hmm. where the guy was like, fair enough. And he was like, are you even a JMU fan? I was like, yeah, I went to school there. And he didn't believe me at first. But, and he thought that I was wearing a suit going there to troll all the Wisconsin people that I was sitting next to. Okay. Um, and so I explained to him, I went there, I liked the team. He was like, okay, okay, that's that's somewhat fair. And I was like, how about this? How about we both agree that whoever wins, we want the other team to beat the fuck out of Duke in the next round. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay, that's good. So we bonded. Also, he thought Rosillo was my security guard mm. that was with me. So he was a little bit intimidated. He is, he is built. He was ready to roll. Yeah. Ryan was ready to rock and roll. So it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a fun night, and getting to see your team win a, uh, a tournament game is – uh, it's electric, and my hopes got up. I was uh, I was thinking that we were going to come out and and at least show some fight against Duke, but uh, yeah, no, it was you a great guys, Friday night. You guys suck too. We just suck way more. Yeah, it was a great Friday night because that was. I well, actually I did on Friday night. The, you you had a great Friday night. I had a tor- torture Friday night. Hank and I almost broke up. Yeah, for good. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, we almost um, we almost actually ended our relationship. But you should forever. thank me. Uh, yeah. You actually should thank me, Big Cat, because. You would have much rather lose on Friday night to me than to beat us and then get your shit kicked in by Duke. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't think we would have lost by 30 to Duke, but I agree. It's 38. Yeah, it sucked. I mean, I bet on James Madison. I, yeah. I held my end of the bargain. I rooted very hard for James Madison yeah. today, and it was not good. Uh, yeah, Hank and I had a we had, we had a, we had a, a, a grudge battle that uh, almost ended our relationship for good. Yeah, I don't know what I was supposed to do. You know, I was, I was. I mean, I explained it to you piece. as many times, and it was before the game. I was just yeah. making a light. We, light we basically comment. stood no, wait, in the wait, kitchen. Wait, wait, wait. It was so just to set the table here. Hank was rooting for JMU because in a sponsored ad deal, correct. We drew JMU, correct, as our team that we had to root for. But he was so was, it, was Hank not being it, a good employee. No, he was saying it like he was going to root for JMU, like as hard, like. He was like, people want to tune in to see me and you go after each other. I was like, no, they don't. You have no connection to JMU. I was like, if PFT was here, mm-hmm. that would make sense. Like, when Max has a big game, I've I've lost so much money betting on Philly sports now and to, riding with Max. But to be fair, you sometimes do that because that way when you lose no, your bet, you can no, get mad at Max, and that's no, fun. I it bet, is very fun. No, fun. I, bet, I bet the Eagles because I thought they were going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. I bet the Phillies because I thought they were going to win the World Series. It wasn't because I was trolling Max. The Villanova one was trolling <laughs> But yeah, Hank it was like he was like basically like I'm gonna root for JMU like I've been rooting for this team my whole life. And mm-hmm. I was like, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, Hank was a one man house divided bumper sticker with his allegiances to JMU and also Duke. And also Duke. Yeah. He, I actually have the idea that Hank came out the biggest loser in this whole entire squad. He didn't even get to enjoy a win. Right, because I didn't I didn't lose fully because I never lost to Duke. You obviously got a win, so you didn't and then you lost Duke, but you got a win. Mm-hmm. And Hank didn't get his sponsored deal to the point where he could win money. The team that he actually likes, Duke, played his sponsored deal and he just didn't root for Duke. So everyone's like, wait, are you a Duke fan anymore? Hank was the biggest loser. Yeah. But now I can just hop back in. Okay. Yeah, you can hop back in. And it was oh, hard. I, I did think Hank, it wasn't going to matter. And then, you know, once the, the game started and I saw the, the Duke U- unis in action, I was It made like, you oh, a little teary eyed. Yeah. Hank, hop back in. I want you to root for Duke. Yeah, yeah. I like it when you root for Hank, Duke. I want you to root really hard for Duke. In fact, I want you to go to their next game. Where are they playing? Oh, they're playing in Dallas. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, that's crazy. But Hank and I did make up. It was a, it was a, tw- oh, wait, it was a 12-hour a, tiff. It's on Friday I, as well. I, I, have a tw- I didn't mean to say tiff. I have, I have a tweet here from, oh, it's from Tiffany. Oh. She wants to know if Hank can come to Dallas to watch his beloved Duke Blue Devils. Is that actually... Oh. Yes. Did she actually? Somebody said, at Hinnies, 
and I was tagged in it because it was a reply to a tweet I had. The never ending. Story. Are you going to Dallas for the next Duke game? Eyeball emoji at Tiffany Gomez. Tiffany replied 29 minutes ago. Good question. Dot dot dot. Oh, you got to go. At Hennies question mark. You got to go. Oh my gotta go. god. I give you permission to go if you want to go, Hank. You got to go. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. Okay, great. You, you always get, ride for Duke as you, he sits in his purple jumpsuit. <laughs> Hank, you gotta, you gotta go down there and fix her wall up. You gotta you gotta plaster her walls, Hank. Yeah, I might have to. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> hit her up. Yeah. But Hank and I did we we ended our beef uh just the, the very next day. It was a bad night for me. I had a very, very bad time. I was sports should not change your mood as much as they do. I mean, you had a bad time today. I had a bad time today, but again, like I'm I'm looking back at Friday. I had a great Friday night, I had a great Saturday. I had a, a stressful – the thing about today, though, was I was stressed out and I was, I was anxious before the game, and then I didn't even get a single second's worth of joy out of the game today. Yeah. I went immediately from being anxious to being sad. To dead. To it dead. was never – we never got to cheer. Never got – I loaded up on JMU. I didn't get money to cheer line, a single spread. Time. I was like, let's go. You know, I, I, had, I had had the appropriate amount of time to process the debacle and torture of Friday night. I would moved on. We had a good Saturday, mm-hmm. and then yeah, we, that was we, there was no cheering. JMU was built to beat the Big Ten. We can't hang with the ACC yet. Yeah, that's that's the next step for us. And now is who are we losing in the portal? Oh, Kansas don't talk. Don't, don't Pat, if you on. want to be a Big, big Ten basketball school, this is what you got to deal what with. What did you say? What did you say? What did you say on Friday? Give give the person a day. Okay, all right, I'll give you a day. Give me a day, day, and then we'll talk portal. I'll give you a day. I'll give you a day. Then we'll talk portal. We were already talking about my coach going somewhere else earlier. I didn't bring that up. I know, I know. I said, I didn't. yeah, it was not you. Yeah. But just give me a day to process. Portal sucks. No, I just, I, I, I asked that because Wisconsin just started, everyone just started hitting the portal. It's like the worst part about college sports now is like, yeah. you lose a game and then the minute after you're just like, oh, cool. Portal. Portal new for team, everyone. New team next year. All right, let's talk about some other games. But congratulations, PFT. That was, you guys, I mean, yeah. you t- I really was like, it, it, the game started and you guys were like, we're going to play Ten times more aggressive and like fast, th- faster than Wisconsin, and Wisconsin just looked like they had just never seen that, and it was over from that moment. Yeah, it was. We we played some tenacious D. Yeah. On Friday for sure, and it was it was so fun to watch. I'm so glad I got to experience it. It's something I never thought. Like JMU basketball has never been a threat to do this ever, and now we got some that we're building on. So it's uh. Maybe it was sweet, sweet sixteen. There's nothing like that. My, Second weekend, my, my little Grinch heart grew three times the size that day. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk some other games. Where where do we want to start? There's been all the favorites have advanced basically. Um, oh, we could start with uh, North Carolina doing the, the the narrative bowl of Tom Izzo in March. We had about ten minutes of he did it again. Mm-hmm. He's done it again, Tom Izzo, you know, January, February, Izzo, and then North Carolina happened because we all collectively forgot that all North Carolina does is beat Tom Izzo and Michigan State in March. Michigan State is 0-6 in the tournament against North Carolina, and it was like a 28-20 game. I read a story where essentially it was a 28-20 game, Michigan State, and Hubert Davis Instead of calling a play during the media timeout, just bitched out everyone in the I love that in, in, in the huddle and was like, "You guys don't want this." And then they finished the half forty-one uh, thirty, and it was or thirty-one mm-hmm. forty thirty-one, and it was just over from there. Yeah, there were like five different teams this weekend that had these types of games where it's like, okay, if they play like this, they're going to win the title. North Carolina had a half where it's like they're going to win the national championship. And I'll I'll say for the first time, maybe Izzo, maybe maybe it is over for Izzo because North Carolina that second half. They just ran the same play over and over, and Michigan State just never stopped it. Yeah, they just kept on running the same screen down low with Baycott, and then they would just hit a three, or Baycott would go one on one, and that was it. Yeah, uh, that it's always, was it. It's always been funny to me that it's January, February, Izzo, April, when you would ideally like your coach to be January, February, March, Izzo. Yes, because that's when you really have. to. Yeah, you need to win the fight. Fi- yeah, but yeah. he is March. But he, he is March. He got that one win. And we got we got fooled for a second. Yeah, yeah. The first half was pretty good for Michigan State, but I, I North Carolina looks like when they're playing at their best, they are one of the five teams that are unbeatable. Yeah, they're very good. Uh, all right, other games from Saturday. Arizona is I. 
I I was rooting for Dayton. I wanted to, I wanted that was the type of team that I wanted to make it. But North, but Arizona, they're looking like a team. Like I look at the bracket right now, and mm-hmm. I don't know. Ten out of the sixteen, I could conceivably see winning it all. They're also fun when they're running. When yeah, getting up and down the court, they're one of the funnest teams to watch. And then hand up, um, I owe Clemson an apology. I was not familiar with their game. Oh yeah, that's Sunday. But yeah, 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 happened to Sunday. Yeah, Clemson. Clemson. I'm just saying, like they're good. I, I think, all of a sudden, I think when they announced the bracket, I believe we said Clemson. They stink. They shouldn't be in here. Correct. I would like to retract that statement. We Clemson for- does not stink retroactively i never said that we forgot that they played a mountain west team in the first game which new mexico looked like they uh i i don't know what they they just didn't i don't know if they like practiced before or they didn't even sleep before but that was one of the worst first round showings for a team that people were picking they were favored in that game they got absolutely demolished by clubs yeah and i was high on on new mexico too so we i, I completely botched that one yes but that's march baby i have a team for you max do you, did you hear about this story? I have a team for you to root for because okay. you don't have a team in the tournament. Okay. That team is Illinois and their first sweet, sweet 16 since 2005, which is a crazy stat because Illinois yeah. historically has been good, but it has been a very rough stretch for them. Brad Underwood has been knocking at that door. I think he's an awesome coach. I actually have like one of my only non-old takes exposed when they hired him. I was like, uh, Brad yeah. Underwood is a sit- awesome coach. They're going to win with him. I know where this is going. Illinois is in the Sweet 16 since the first time in 2005. There was a story out there that Brad Underwood was trying to – so the last couple of years they've had a, a, a team that has not really fit the modern basketball. So they have big man, a guard. His whole goal was we got to find more wings. we got to find more guys that are dynamic with the ball. His entire starting five is over 6'6". Six, six. Terrence Shannon is insane. He's got over 30, 30 and a half points a game in the last six games. What are you averaging? And uh, they also have a guy, uh, Damask, who's so, so good. And the story goes, they lost the game early in the season. Jay Wright was calling the game. Brad Underwood had a meeting with Jay Wright after the game. They became friends. And Jay Wright was like, hey, this guy, Damask, why don't you just do booty ball with him? Mm. classic Villanova booty ball where you just fucking let him get the ball ISO and he bl- and he brings the people down in the post like what Jalen Brunson used to do like all those guys used to do and, he, and that has basically changed the course of their season and that's how they run their offense and they're a lot more dynamic now it opens up everything for Terrence Shannon Jay Wright has helped coach Illinois to the first Sweet 16 since 2005 Max yeah, no, that's great. I wish he, he did more for Villanova. I thought you'd be more excited about this. You wish no. he had told that to Kyle <laughs> Neptune. Correct. Jay yeah. Wright is such a good coach. He's helping Illinois break their 19-year streak of not getting to the Sweet 16. Yeah, no, I saw that. Villanova Twitter wasn't, I mean, <laughs> I'm happy. I'm ha- is he a traitor? My, my eyes He's lit up when I saw he turned it. His back on it's you? Illinois. I was like, Max. What if, what if he goes to Kentucky? He's not going to Kentucky. Booty ball, Max. Although I do have a a trade in place for the rights to Jay Wright for John Calipari. Oh, okay, okay. You would accept that? Well, yeah, because he's not going to come back. So I'll give up the rights to get to get. Do you have his rights? You want John Cal? Yes, we have the rights, huh? You want John Cal? Yeah, hundred percent. Italian. He would be good in the Big East. Yeah, keep the keep the Big East Italian. Yeah, I thought you'd be. I thought (laughs) put it on a giant on a red hat with giant letters. Keep the Big East Italian. I thought you'd be more excited about this revelation that booty ball has been brought to Illinois by via Jay Wright. Uh, No, okay. Also brought to Illinois via your other team, Penn State, because that was part of it. Was Brad Underwood's son is on the coaching staff, and he's like uh, Jalen Pickett from Penn State last year did booty ball to us three times, beat us three times. Booty ball can beat anyone. No, yeah, booty ball is great. I've seen a lot of guards at Villanova <laughs> do the booty ball, and it's always fun to watch. So, um, booty ball is great. Yeah, because you just see these guards just uh, back because someone down. The other down. guards just don't know how to defend it, right? And they and, and Jalen Brunson is like is one hundred percent when he goes to booty ball. He could literally do that every possession <laughs> yes. when he was at Nova. It was <laughs> awesome, and then we just had shooters everywhere, so he would just kick out and it would be open. It was booty ball. Easy bucket for Brunson or kick out wide open. Did he call it booty time. ball when he was at Villanova? I, I don't. I, don't I think, think so. I think was, booty ball was uh, Coach Underwood's son yeah. was calling it booty ball after they got torched by Jalen Pickett at Penn State last year. It, it sounds so much better when it's called booty ball. It's great. Just be like, what are we going to run today? Booty you, ball. Yeah, use your ass. And Damascus is awesome at booty ball. 
So Illinois, like that is a very big story, the fact that they broke through and they have a team that could absolutely beat anyone, especially with the way Terrence Shannon's playing. Uh, the other weird story I had from Saturday was uh, Bill Self. Yeah, after losing to Gonzaga, said, for the last month I've been thinking about next season. Mm-hmm. So I, I was – I was thinking about it. I actually, weirdly, like people were roasting him, and my initial inclination was to roast him too. But Bill Self, the one thing that it, you can say about Bill Self is he's actually like probably too honest in his press conferences and too honest with like the assessment of his team. Mm-hmm. He essentially was like, we've been hurt and we are going to bring back a lot of starters next year. And when I bring back starters, I usually have success. And yeah, I hate it here. Or was he saying that um, who's who's the guard that's not playing? Uh, McCullers. Yeah, that McCullers, like, when he was out, when it, he found out that he was going to be out for a long time, he was like, well, our season's over. Yeah. Just at that point, he's like, I knew it. And then Hunter Dickinson getting his shoulder torn off. Yeah, but he is a very honest coach. Remember, there was a couple years ago when they lost to USC, and he's like, I wish Drake had beaten USC. Yeah. I knew that USC was going to beat us. He's very honest, except for the hair. Although, yeah, except he, actually, hair. you know what? So we've talked about Bill Self's hair a lot on the show over the course of the years. I About a year ago, I started to turn on it. And I'm I'm thinking that it might be real hair. Yeah, but then you see one shot. I saw one shot yesterday. And I was like, no, because I can spot a rug. And I don't think it's a rug. He's I think got he's a great, got great like astro turn. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people were saying he's got a wig beforehand. No, I think I think he got a good a good surgery done. He got ravaged. Yeah, he got ra- ravaged. Yeah, ravaged. Big he got time. The ravage. Uh, but yeah, Bill Self. People were were criticizing for that quote because Gonzaga absolutely torched him, and Mark Few deserves our credit. Nine straight Sweet 16s is insane. Mm-hmm. It's hard to win a game in the tournament, and he's gone. He's won at least two nine straight years. He's also uh, the stat is twenty four straight March Madnesses, fifteen straight first round wins, nine straight Sweet 16s. Yeah, anyone would sign up for that. And, and yeah, he doesn't have a title, but you're ba- you're j- basically t- saying to your fans. I will make sure that you guys have that extra week of happiness every single that year. That week of happiness is huge. And and not only did they beat Kansas, they destroyed Kansas. Destroyed them. Played perfect basketball in the shit second Shit pumping. Half. Yeah. That was a great game. Uh, what other things from Saturday? I mean, I was Another, another really fun stat to keep your eye on here yeah. is uh, the Tennessee-Texas game. Tennessee made that a lot closer than it, than it had to be because they couldn't shoot worth a, a, a goddamn. And against Texas, Texas had 19 points in the first half Yep, against them. Uh, Colorado State played Texas the game before. Colorado State had how many points in the first half? Was it 12? Uh, 11. 11. 11. 11 points in the first yeah, half? 11. Who did Colorado State play before that? Virginia. UVA, who had 14 points yeah. in the first half. So it's like we said that Colorado State caught UVA. They caught, uh, what did we say, Cavid 19? Yeah. Uh, Texas also caught UVA from Colorado State. Yes. So now is Tennessee going to get UV AIDS against Creighton in the next round. Possibly. In the first half. I actually think that if you're a Tennessee fan, that was the perfect way to win because it was the way you always lose. Like that game, they just went so cold shooting, but their defense is so much better this year. And they like their offense is a lot better than it was last year, but their defense, they could rely on their defense when their shooting was bad. And that was a game that Tennessee always loses. And Rick Barnes always loses where it's like, you're up double digits in the second half. And what just happened? We just lost this game. They survived the, what just Mm -hmm. happened? We just lost this game. And you have to do that to win. Like you can, not everyone's going to be like UConn last year where they, you know, beat everyone by double digits. If you win a tight national title, if you look at every national champion, there's a couple games mixed in there where you didn't have your best stuff and you just found a way to do it. This could be that game for Tennessee. Yeah, their score connect. He he sucked. He was so bad. So bad. So bad. Finally made a three down the stretch, but for most of the game, he couldn't score. They had to rely on Adu and um and their defense. Uh, yeah, yeah, Adu and and Viscovi. Yeah, on defense, they're they're legit. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to that Creighton Tennessee game. Yeah, and then we had the Oregon Creighton game, which was one of the most electric, uh, weird games because you had Creighton miss every wide open shot, and Oregon try to beat a team with two guys, Cousinard mm-hmm. and Dante. They took every single shot essentially down the stretch, and uh, double overtime just ran out of gas. Yeah, it felt like Oregon was the better team for most of the game. They were, and they and, just... And then it just kept extending until they ran out of gas until the second overtime. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. They tried to win with two guys. I've never seen anything like it. Like, Cousinard, that three he hit at the end of the... Uh, what is it? Regular... No, second... First overtime. 
was just an insane shot to hit. And they just, every single time down the floor, is like, one of these two guys has to do it. Otherwise, we're fucked. And Creighton just outlasted him. Pig yeah. East, 6-0. 6-0. 6-0. and, oh. Six and, oh. Six and oh. Uh, All right, let's talk some Sunday games. Let me do a, a quick ad to talk some Sunday games and then a little preview of what we got coming up. Uh, if you're trying to go to a game, Hank in Dallas, game time. Game time. Did you know you can get tickets to Duke versus Houston in Dallas right now for – can you go look it up? Mm-hmm. Look it up right now. Uh, you sh- uh, That's right, with Game Time, the official t- ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They have flash deals for sudden discounts, zone deals for when you're feeling flexible, and their lowest price guarantee means that if you can find the same seats for less – Anywhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time is the best place for last minute seats with up to 60% off your favorite events. What are you waiting for? I'm going to buy those Duke Houston tickets. 380 is looking like the lowest. Wow. I'll that, say this right now. That's, that's, that's all fees included, too, because it's Game Time. So and, what you see is what you get. And PFT and I will. I will buy you you and Tiffany tickets. Big Cat will buy you a ticket. I'll match for yeah. a guest of your choice. For, for <laughs> Tiff. Yeah, you can take anyone. I actually just use Game Time for uh, Madison, Ma- Mad Dog, Madeline, Mad Dog, and Mackenzie, who went to Olivia Rodrigo. I used Game Time, got them mm-hmm. great seats with Game Time. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app. Today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with the Game Time app. We're also brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. Big announcement. Did you know you can get almost almost anything from Uber Eats? And no, I'm not just talking about food from your favorite restaurant. Uber Eats has a full range of delivery capabilities beyond just restaurant food like groceries, convenience, and alcohol. Whether you need ice cream, batteries, highlighters, or paper towels, or maybe all four, Uber Eats can deliver almost almost anything Get grocery, alcohol, and everyday essentials in addition to the restaurant food you love. So in other words, get almost, almost anything with Uber Eats. Order now. For alcohol, you must be legal drinking age. Please enjoy responsibly. Product availability varies by region. See app for details. We've been using Uber Eats all weekend. I've been getting a lot of candy with Uber Eats. So go right now. Use Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything. All right, Sunday. We talked about your game. That sucked. I'm very worried about Duke, although Houston winning makes me less worried. But that Duke, would, Duke played a perfect game. Duke couldn't miss. They, could they, not they miss. couldn't miss. McCain was on fire. It was it was a blowout. There was there's no team that can beat Duke if they shoot that well. Yeah. The thing is, they're probably not going to shoot that well in every other game. But yeah, it was it was just it was a blowout from start to finish. There was no time at no point during that game did I feel optimistic. No, no, it really it actually is crazy to say that, but it's. A fact. Uh, the only thing I can hang my hat on is that it wasn't the worst blowout of the weekend. Yeah, who by, was that? By one point. Who was that? Well, uh, Houston blew out their first round opponent by a lot. Yeah, I mean, like in this oh, round. Oh, Purdue, U- Utah State. Pur- Purdue, Utah State was a 39-point victory. Yeah, Purdue. I was 38. I got to say, I got to give a lot of credit, Purdue. They, uh, yeah, people will be like, oh, they haven't played anyone. They played a 16 seed. They played a uh, uh, Utah State team that was probably overrated because they didn't play anyone non-con. Purdue de- deserves credit because Purdue has failed so tragically the last couple of years that to get to the Sweet 16 and to do it the way they did it, where they absolutely shit-pumped yeah. both the teams along the way, and Zach Eady put up just insane, insane stats. Uh, Purdue's very good. I'm not – I'm not. I'm a Purdue hater, but I'm also a Purdue, Purdue realist. They're very good at basketball. So what do you have, 23 or 24 today? And they took him out real early. Yeah, no, he was out of the game, and and he was dominant when he was in. He was dominant when he was in the game in their opening uh, against Grambling. Yeah, he had twenty three and fourteen in, in against Grambling. I think he had a double double, like with like eight minutes left in the first half. Yeah, so I'm with thirty and twenty one. I'll say it. Purdue's legit. Zach Eady has fifty three points and thirty five rebounds through two games. Also, Jake, on your wild meter, where do we have it? Purdue in the ultimate wild. Uh, their path, if everyone wins, uh, who's supposed to win, would be they're playing Gonzaga. They played them in the Maui. They're playing. They would play Tennessee. They played them and beat them in the Maui. And then if they, if, if Marquette, I believe it's Marquette. Yeah, that would be crazy. Marquette would be the Final Four game 
they played and beat them in the Maui. That's exactly how it went in the Maui. Right. So that is wild. to say there was one person who's like they haven't played anyone. It's like they are they could easily their next three games could be games that they have already won on the season. Also, you can't say they haven't played anyone. A, you don't control that. B, they earned the number one seed. Correct. So, mm-hmm. screw those people. Yes. Screw them. Yeah. And they could then potentially play Illinois again, who they beat. So Yeah, the championship. Well, yeah. no, they beat them. They did not beat them in the championship. No, I'm saying they could meet that. In the, in championship, the championship, yes. Yeah. Who they've beaten twice. So, they've played some really good teams that are all sitting in front of them. Purdue's a problem. Zach Eady is a problem. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he does get some calls. That's not why they won this game. They won this game because Purdue was dominant and Zach Eady was really good, even without the refs on his side. But it is – it's confusing to watch. The refs don't know how to officiate him. It, it, Matt Painter had a, a comment after basically calling out anyone who says Zach Eady's not good at basketball. I agree with Matt Painter. Anyone who says Zach Eady's not good at basketball is a fucking moron. The guy's good at basketball, especially college basketball. I don't want – whatever happens to the NBA happens to the NBA. He has – Put on a lot of muscle, gotten a lot better through his years at Purdue. I've watched it. He's he's put in a lot of work. He's gotten he's very good at basketball. I don't love how he's refed, but I would never say Zach Eady's not very good at basketball. Yeah, he's really good. Anyone who says he's not good at basketball, he's just tall, is being a hater. He's also got a great scowl. There very are, underrated yeah. look on his face when he gets into business time. You can tell, and he like he does the LeBron face where he dips his forehead and looks at you at the top of his eyes. Yeah. It's very intimidating. There's also probably the, the reason why that narrative is out there is there's probably two or three times a game where he is just too tall. Yeah. Where it's like he'll, he'll pick up a rebound, he'll take it literally off the block, and then just not even barely jump and put it back in. And you're like, he's too tall. Yeah, and, and basketball is always great for that so that us uh, five – eight and a half, five, nine people at home can watch and be like, if I was just as tall as that guy, I would be so good at basketball. Yeah. Without taking into account the fact that your body would be huge and you wouldn't be able to move as quickly as you do. Correct. If you got these tiny little Mickey Mouse limbs. Correct. Yeah. And he's gotten a lot better and a lot bigger and stronger. Uh, Zach Eady confirmed good at basketball. That was my full say something nice about Purdue. We also had uh, Colorado Marquette, which was one of the best games of the weekend because that was kind of similar where Colorado – has been playing so many games of basketball. They've been, I don't know, they have six games in the last 12 days or something like that. But Marquette is back with Kolick looking like they could absolutely win the national title. Kolick, someone said it on Twitter, which was so perfect. Kolick's drive and uh, layup with his left where he kind of does a little bit of body work and then extends his arm and is able to hit it off the backboard is the basketball equivalent of the tush push. I don't know how you defend it. He's he's the smartest player in the tournament. Yeah. Just watching the angles that he takes and like when he knows the situation all the time. He makes the perfect play. Even at the end of the game when they were just trying to they were trying to run the clock out, take as many seconds as he could on each possession. He knew what to do. He knew when to pass the ball, where to cut in order to take time off so they couldn't foul him. Yeah. And so they w- like they were trying to foul Kolik. Yeah. And Kolik was just too smart for him getting around. So Having that guy running point for you is it's huge, and now I'm that's going to be a good matchup against NC State, NC State team of destiny. I don't know team of destiny survives Oakland, and uh, yeah, that is going to be that's going to be a very fun game. And then the other two quick games I want to talk about was uh, the Alabama Grand Canyon game was one of the most chaotic games I've ever watched of not great basketball, but uh, I d- I think if you're Grand Canyon, great season, credit to you. Um, you should just make all your players just walk around with the basketball for the for the entirety of the offseason because they just holding on to a basketball was a very very hard thing for them to do. And they their their players would be doing these crossovers, but they wouldn't actually be doing. They would just be in standing in place, but right. doing crossover dribbles, not actually moving side to side, just moving the ball from one side of their body to the other. And every time they bounce it, you thought they were going to bounce it off their own kneecap or their shin. It was uh, it was out of control, and then it was I'll- it was just hands and arms flying everywhere for forty minutes, and the ball just randomly bouncing out of bounds. Yeah, and then a basket would get scored now and now and again. And then Alabama running the the basketball equivalent of the spread offense. Mm-hmm. They're doing they're doing like some some football shit out there. Well, and they just they go they like to go ISO, they like to run, and when it works, it's nice. But they also don't play defense. Yeah, and I, I've I've been a critic of Alabama basketball because of our good friend Rico Bosco and his love affair with Nate Oates. They they were watching them in the end of the season. They were soft. They got bullied down low. That Florida game in the SEC tournament was like they Florida just absolutely dominated them with layups and, and just being like stronger than them. Alabama won this game because they 
were strong rebounding the ball because it was Grand Canyon up three, Alabama comes down, and they basically had two minutes where they were on their side of the court because they went make three throw, miss three throw, free throw, rebound, make free throw, miss free throw, rebound, mm-hmm. and one. Like yeah. they just they they were able to out muscle Grand Canyon. And then Grand Canyon would would try to run back down and have the same pace that Alabama has. They would pull up and take the worst three point shot that you've ever seen. Yeah, hit off the front of the rim. Alabama gets the ball. They're back down at the other end. Yeah. So the Alabama deserves credit there. Oh, we forgot one one other thing was Iowa State looks really really good. I want their coach so bad. He's from Wisconsin. Is he really? Yeah. He looks like a Wisconsin guy. He looks like a wrestler. He looks like he's been like out in Muscle the burger. He's been out in the sun and springtime drinking milk all day. I can tell too that that's like starting to bother because I've I've been included on some some Twitter threads where Iowa State fans are like he already has his dream job and everyone's like but he wants to go back and I'm like I don't want to get involved in this but yeah I want him. Yeah, you could get him. What could we do? You could have him. Does he want it? Does he want to be the president of Stella Blue Coffee? Would you make that happen? Easily. I've offered that job to way too many people, but that's fine. Whoever takes it first gets it. I think I offered it to Big T. Is is he the most jacked basketball coach? Who? Mike Martin's still coaching. Yeah. He's jacked. Buzz is pretty jacked. Jack, Buzz is jacked. Yeah. Buzz is absolutely jacked. Bruce Pearl, sneaky, kind of jacked. Barrel-chested. Yeah. Bruce Pearl went out sad. That Auburn... Everyone's bracket got busted with Auburn. Yeah, it was tough. The analytics darling. I was tough. Did you know Auburn was, you know, top five in both these things? It was I I love the the week leading up to the brackets where it's like it's now just TikTok. You can't go one one TikTok or Instagram scroll without some dude being like, I got the perfect formula. Yeah. Everyone everyone has a formula. Everyone yeah. does. And, and every, I believe and, them all. And, and every year they're wrong. Yeah. But yeah, these these games are. I, I'm so excited for next weekend. What other what other uh, games Houston, did we miss? Houston A&M. Yeah, that was incredible. I mean, Houston almost like that was the fact that Houston let Texas A&M get to overtime. That would have been an all time, all time, all time March Madness loss. So they had a 99 percent win probability. Atlanta Falcons like win probability with 44 seconds left. I think what A&M was down was it 12 with it like 11 a with 148 oh, i think 11 with yeah. 148 left and then somehow through the magic of wade who just t- took every shot possible out there um they they claw back get to overtime and then everyone on houston fouled out everyone. yeah they i mean texas a&m had a buzz williams coached a perfect game in the fact that he from the very first whistle their entire strategy was go to the hoop on every possession and make them foul you, mm-hmm. and they did. But Shed was too good. I mean that that hop Shed, step Shed by Shed, good. where he just—I think he started almost at the three-point line and ended up in the lane for that bucket down the stretch. He was the only guy left. We had the we had the guy who was sitting on the bench named Elvin. Elvin came who had in. to come in and hit a free throw. Elvin Isn't was that a name from our D and D quests. Elvin? No, like you can be. That's like elf-like. Would be Elvin. Elvin. You can have Elvin. Elvin, oh, Elvin I'm features. the Elvin wizard. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's elf. That's so, an elf. so, like, your cake, the elf like wizard, Elvin. Elvin. Okay. Yeah. Like, that, that means to, so like, have qualities pertaining to an elf. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. Who's going to be mad that we didn't mention them? Yukon's the fucking best. Yeah. Okay. So, let's just suck Yukon's dick real quick. Yukon is going to win the national championship. I mean, they're doing the same thing again. I mean, the San Diego State will be definitely a, a step up from Northwestern and Stetson. Yeah. But I have no. I think they'll kill him. I want to be very clear. UConn is going to win the national championship. Uh, also going to win the national championship. UNC mm-hmm. is going to win the national championship. Arizona is going to win the national championship. Uh, Gonzaga is going to win it. Purdue is going to win the national championship. Mar- NC State's the team of destiny. Marquette's going to win the national championship. NC State is the team of destiny. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to lose at some point. Houston's Houston is a tough out. I think Houston's going to win the national championship. And also okay. Duke is... Duke's playing the great way, ball the right way, now. The way they shot yeah, today. Duke's playing great ball Duke right is now. going to win the national championship. Purdue also going to win the national championship. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Virginia Purdue. last, you know, when Virginia lost the Sweet 16. They Purdue's going to win the Natty. It's in the script. Yep. Creighton's going to be, if the Creighton hits their threes, they will probably win the national championship. Uh, Tennessee and Rick Barnes. Actually, the only, to, to go full circle on this, the only team that's not going to win the national championship is the team we disrespected going into the tournament. Clemson will not win the national championship. Yeah, there's zero, <laughs> zero chance. <laughs> and now they will. No, and it's how no. they will. Oh, look, I, if if that happens, I'll get a cat. Oh, okay. It's exciting. For the I'm, not, I'm not gonna. Yeah, 
I think they will just because we said they won't. They're not. Clemson's not going to win. I'm reverting back to my initial take. Yeah. Clemson doesn't deserve to be here. Yeah. Um, all right, Jake, what what do you got for one shining moment or just, uh, you know, what announcer did a good job? What was that announcer that I motherfucked on Saturday night? Andrew Catalan. Piece of shit. No. Wrong. Piece of shit. Wrong. Wrong. He, call, he, called a, he called a technical foul. No, what did he call? Yeah, he called it. Did he say there was a technical foul? And then he's like, oh, there wasn't. I forget. Yeah, there, there, there's been so many you things that I've that. gotten mad at. You can't do that. Adam Lefko's kind of stealing your swag. Um, yeah, but I'll, I know I'll him personally. It. He's a good guy. He's yeah. a good guy. Well, but but, it, but I'm watching the games. Yeah, a little bit. And there's been a few times where I'm like, I have to do a second glance because I'm like, is that big head? And it's like, no. Listen, wait. It's the the fact. Like, how's he stealing his swag? He looks kind of like got, my advisors. Yeah, he's got the. He's got a turtleneck in the. Yeah, yeah. By the way, he kind of looks like me. Yeah, it's just Lefko. I don't know if you've. If you've heard him talk after uh, the the games on TNT are over, he says, "Welcome back, it's me, Lefko." I love that. He's a good dude. But yeah, that's all right. Uh, you know, yeah, it's like stealing sh- my swag. It's like share one name. Yeah, that was my only other. <laughs> that was just my observation over the weekend. Was yeah, but I I like I like Lefko. We're like long lost brothers. So he's he did a good job. It's respect. All right, so Jake, tell us what we missed. Yeah, so uh, Florida, Colorado. Entering the weekend, that was the game of the tournament. Walter Clayton hit that was three awesome. to tie it at 100. Yes. And then Colorado hit a jumper uh, to win it 102-100 in regulation. You never see that in college. That hung on the rim, Colorado. right? That one? Yeah. This is fun. This is a trip down memory lane because it's like I watched all these games, but I do remember that. That one was like the Kawhi shot. Yes, exactly. Same Who spot. Who was that shot against? Uh, I think what team was that? Let's go, to the, let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yale, Sorry. Yale stuns Auburn. Uh, Nebraska's Tominaga getting emotional. Yeah, I mean Tominaga. That was yeah. the that was the best five minutes that Nebraska basketball has ever played, and then they got absolutely dog walked. It's just crazy to me that Nebraska, a, a school that big with such a good athletic department overall, has never won a tournament game. Yeah, they never won a tournament. It's crazy. Uh, it was- Grand Canyon's uh, win over St. Mary's was dominant. Yep, that was Friday. Yep. Uh, Dante, you mentioned alley oop. Uh, we had a halftime buzzer beater from Clemson today, so more flowers to Clemson ha- for a halftime buzzer beater. Yeah, halftime buzzer beater. Just Sorry. giving out the. I'm gonna moments. I'm gonna say no flowers for that. Giving out the moments left okay. and right. Halftime buzzer beater, no. And then uh, A&M Miracle forces OT. And then what about your one shining moment? The, that was the. Back oh, that end was of my all list. of them. Oh, you think Clemson halftime buzzer beater should be on one shining moment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a, it was a deep one. Was that their signature moment? They had the, the announcer call. What about Oregon's in the first uh, game first on Thursday? Halftime buzzer beater. Yeah, I have that. Oh, okay. OT. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you well, have? What do you have? No, no, no. In the on Thursday. Oh, no. Halftime buzzer beater. <laughs> I don't have that. So not all halftime buzzer beaters are built the same. Yeah. Okay. What, what moment do you have in the JMU Wisconsin game? Uh, I don't know if it's I have probably any one of our nothing? one of our seventy five turnovers. Any, yeah, I don't have any specific. Yeah, moment. I'd say I'm one sure of there's going to be something. But it's probably just like you guys hitting it's, three. It's probably about like that JMU guy you like celebrating after the what guy in the stands yelling at the other guy in the tux. Yeah, well, yeah. What about that guy shutting the fuck up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We could create our own. What have you? How would you grade this tournament, Jake? So I've compared this tournament a lot to the 2019 tournament, where Virginia won it all. Also, good news for Purdue, where it was mostly chalk. In the first weekend, we had all ones and twos advance, which this time I think it's like the fifth or sixth time ever we've had that to the Sweet 16. Um, But in that second weekend, we had some crazy games. Remember that Purdue-Tennessee Sweet 16 game? I think Ryan Klein was his name. Uh, He dropped like 40, went to overtime, I think. And then the Elite Eight game was the famous Virginia-Purdue game with Mamadi Diakite. Mm. Uh, so I like how you said that. He, yeah, he was ready correctly, and then, and then they won it all. So I think we're lining up to have an incredible Sweet Sixteen in Elite Eight. Calling it, a shot, it's I a, like it. It's going to be a great week to look at the logos that are playing against each other this upcoming yeah. weekend. Because, like, think about it. If it was UConn, Yale, no disrespect to Yale, it's like, all right, the battle for Connecticut. Yeah, that would be a great storyline in Boston, but they would have won by twenty. Yeah, they would have yeah. killed them. And they might still beat San Diego State by 20, but at least like you have the storyline of the championship rematch and all of that. And then How about that Yale big sweater guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good for him. He yeah, had he, some huge shoulders. He's on the moment, right, Jake? Yeah. He's okay. got to be. Yeah, that's a moment. Got to be. That's a for yeah. sure a moment, guy. Also, wedge account four. Four. Mm. Underwhelming. 
Oh, that part's underway. Not great. Have, have we figured out what to call? Because there was one one of the hoops on Thursday. Yeah. The net was too tight. Mm -hmm. The net was so tight that the ball was getting stuck in the net. Loosen them up, but whatever. What do you call those? I think Megan said netters, maybe. Netters. Uh, be careful with that. Okay. <laughs> Why? It, just don't say that one again. Okay. You pronounce things very well, but just, just to be safe. Oh, oh. Yeah, just to be yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um that's that's a good list though, Jake. It's been a fun tournament. I'm yes. excited for yeah, this. Yeah, definitely week. not the most chaotic opening weekend we've seen. But still, but the Kentucky game, yeah, like 100%. that's Kentucky's got to look at this Sweet 16 and be like, it's all all our old friends are there. It's still yeah, the we're not. Yeah, tough tough day for Kentucky. Yeah, seeing that um, Kentucky and and Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, Kansas won it all two years ago. So yeah, like, there yeah. was and Bill Self was worried about next year. <laughs> There, there was a yeah. Put me down. Actually, I wanted, I want to do a future on Kansas for next season. No, I actually. Bill Self's already looking ahead. Someone, hold on. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kansas might return four starters next year. Here's how Bill Self did when that happens. Uh, Twenty-one, twenty-two national champions. Fifteen, sixteen, number one overall seed. Oh uh, nine, oh ten, or ten, number one overall seed. Oh seven, oh eight, national champs. 0607 number one overall seed. Yeah, see, I'm, Bill Self is thinking about next year, so I'm thinking about next year. Yeah. Next year's – this was the season – They're going to be a really good team next year. This was the season before the season for Kansas. Yes. Uh, there was a, a person online, Pranav Sreeman, that asked uh, an interesting question that I thought I'd bring up to embrace debate here. They said, who's the worst NBA player that could lead the worst team in the tournament to the final? Oh. Like who's the worst NBA player that could take? Who's the worst team in to the, the final? Yeah, or to win the championship? Who's the worst team? I think it was Stetson or Howard or UVA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, UVA. Who's the worst? Who's the worst player in the NBA that you could put on UVA and have them win the national championship? I think I know my answer. I I think because there's only like I maybe like three or four guys. Wagner was. Oh, I think there's way more than that to take. Yeah, that could take the worst team and beat every other team with that. I don't know. The NBA players are so much better than college I know. basketball players. It's insane. Sam Hauser? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the thing about it, he's the, the best player, and they're saying like he's going to be a, what, fringe first rounder? Yeah. I don't know if even that, yeah. And he's the best player right now. I campaign. Camp, you think campaign could win? Could lead UVA? I do too, just yeah. off vibes. Yeah. Just based off vibes. Bobby Portis? Bobby, uh, no, you need it. It would need to be like well, Virginia. Uh, would be a be scorer. The, you got to be a yeah. scorer. Yeah. Win. Ultimate test. Because no, I think it's such a weird system to play in. I think you lean into it. You lean into the defensive That's pressure. Why Hauser would be good. But Pat, wait, there's you. There's got to the, be more than four, like. I mean, wait, wait, Luka, no, wait. Tatum, LeBron, probably Anthony Davis, uh, Jokic. If you want to lean into the UVA ness of it all, put Pat Bev on that team. Yeah. I mean, imagine Embiid playing college Embiid, basketball. Yeah, he would, yeah. it would be Wilt. Yeah, yeah. Like We're, there's so oh, many guys oh. that would just dominate. Wimby, Wimby. Nobody could stop Wimby. There's not, a, there's not a team in college basketball right now that could do a goddamn thing about Victor Wembanyama. Someone did say something very mean where they were like, Zach Eady is exactly like Victor Wembanyama, minus like the shot making, the versatility, the handles, the speed, mm -hmm. the skill. That was mean. The, the, the tallness is there. The tallness is you there. You can't coach tall. Yeah, no, I think there's a lot. I mean, it's not. I think it's more than 15 or 20. Kawhi I see, would I, dominate. I, I, was, I was thinking about Kawhi earlier, but he would dominate for sure. But could you just rely on him to single-handedly? I don't know how, how anyone would. You'd have to, like, triple team him. Steph? Steph almost yeah, did it yes. with Davidson. But Steph doesn't count because he's one of the best players in the NBA that could do it. Yeah, no, I'm just saying there's you, – you said there's only four players that could do I it? I think there's like four. I think there's like five. Twenty plus easy. I mean, the NBA is way better. I know that. Yeah, I just – all these guys thinking about Oh, Giannis. It. Giannis would be Giannis a problem. Would be a fucking, He'd be a problem. He would dominate everyone. It would be a joke watching it. I'd like to see that. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I just think because uh, then what do you do? You put like three guys on them, and then you just have everyone else stand around and shoot. Think of it this: Jimmer almost did it by himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. he sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he was good. That's a great point. <laughs> Golki be Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Legend. Yeah, I I think you could I think you put a lot of guys on UVA and they would fuck everyone up pretty bad.
Mm -hmm. Especially because UVA could actually play defense, so then you just add one more defensive like stopper. No one would score on him, and then you just have that one guy score all the points. Yeah, I think UVA is probably the wrong example to use for that one. Yeah, but like Longwood, still uh, you put you put LeBron on Longwood, and they're they're in the Final Four for sure. And it'll be so much fun. He's, to I don't know if LeBron can play college ball. That's why the coolest it. thing LeBron could have ever done for his career is just go to Akron for one year and just be it, like, how deep could we take it? It would have been perfect just so that we could know. So yeah. we could know the answer to that question. Yeah, and it would also be great if we just we, – we should just do a tournament like this. Someone should fund this tournament where every team that's in the tournament, we just replay the tournament again, but everyone gets to add an NBA player. Yeah, Adam Silver, you get all your ideas from the internet. Here's a good one. Make it legal for NBA players – to go and play one season in college after they've been in the league for like ten years. Is my yeah, it's my rule of br bringing a graduate back. No, not even that. Like yeah, yeah. a guy that but goes. That would be it's a different sick. rule because the guy goes straight to the NBA, and then they get to choose what college they want to play for yeah. one season. Yeah, but it would be it would be sick. Yeah, It'd be awesome to watch. Uh, okay, anything else, Hank? You enjoy it? I feel like you were. Did you have a good time? I had a good time. Uh, my Mega Max lock Purdue was a miraculous backdoor cover. Yeah, that uh, was so that was mind. fun. Yeah. Saturday night was fun. Sunday wasn't as fun. But I still have fun. You see, that's the thing. I'm excited for are... good Sweet 16 matchups, and I hope we get a good Final Four. I, I, I Maybe it's just because March Madness is something that is so uh, ingrained in my head that I lose money no matter what. That like when people are like, oh, all you care about is your bets. You you decide if it's fun if you win or lose. I ha I lost all my bets. I had a lot of fun. Like, I enjoyed watching basketball for four days. I enjoyed the moments. None of it ended up good for me. I also lost my job Friday night, so that wasn't as fun. No, you didn't. You got fired? I did for a second. And then you kept showing up? I was, I was, we were on the precipice. You monsoned it? Well, he just kept on asking me the same question. I gave him the same answer over and over and what over. What was the question? He was just like, will you be mad if I go hard? And I was like, yes, I care a lot about my team. So wait, so ha did Hank at any point go hard? No, because we had, we sass, we we I didn't we, say a word. we figured it out that it wasn't it would yeah. not make sense. I was like, everyone wants to tune in to watch me die. I will die, and it will be tortured, and, and then Biz I'm gonna die, and then I died and was tortured. Biz, and everyone watched me. Biz was was Biz, obviously, you know. Yeah, golden retriever. He's like, what are we taking? I was like, I think a lot of people are taking JMU, mm -hmm. and that set big cat off. Well, Hank also touched me. And was like, did the DraftKings huddle up and was like, what do we think about JMU guys? And touched me. He is touchy. He touches me, and it's a technical foul. I wanted that on the record, technical foul, if he touches me. He's been touching me a lot. Yeah, Hank, Hank gets very... Non-consensual touching should not be allowed in the he, in that setting. He gets very feely. Yeah. Max, is it okay that I kissed you on Friday? Yeah, it was good. It was okay. good, good ad. Shout out game time. Yeah, yeah Max just had a fucking vacation weekend. Well, no, Max, Max is not. I'm on the company. Max, Max is not true. Max was working hard. Working hard, got some great clips out there. Yeah. That was my lowest moment when I was just like, Max just fucking that, like burns our money going to New York. It was three hundred dollars. I, know. For I the said it was my weekend. I said it was my lowest moment. <laughs> was no shocked. one was even listening to me I when I said it. I was appalled. What? What were you appalled about? I thought Max did a great job. He did do a, a great, great job. job. Can I? Just, I love Max. Can I do a? Can never be mad at Max. A quick PSA because I was I was just thinking about the game. Um, it's love love seeing the fans out in public if you're an AWL love saying hi to you, love taking pictures all that stuff uh one small request though like if i'm actually peeing and my penis is out and i'm at a urinal can we wait for like 15 i disagree seconds? it's a friday night march madness game i think that's all bets are off yeah i just yeah okay i think they get i think they get to touch it if they want <sighs> You don't even let him catch back. your arm. Take that back. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> going to start grabbing our dick. No, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. We're going to get our dicks grabbed. Well, okay, so it's not just... Don't for, do that. It's not for me, but it's for the other three guys that were standing next to me also taking a piss, and there's a guy just with his camera out being like, PFT, take a picture. And then the three guys are like, "Yeah, you're taking a picture of me while I'm pissing. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair request. I think that's a fair request. That's a fair request. Like, if I'm shitting... And you put your phone over the top of the stall and get a picture of me. That's one because that's just me. Yeah, it's everybody else. Yeah, that's a fair request. You you agree? Yes. What's up, Hank? What's wrong? You're just losing today? No, I'm I'm good. Hank's not good. He's not good. There, Hank, you're hiding something. I can always tell. <laughs> What's on your mind, Hank? There's nothing on my What's mind. mind. What's wrong? Come on, you're on the psychiatrist's couch over there. Uh, nothing. I... What's wrong? No, there's something. There's something wrong. Yeah. You talking to Tiff right now? <laughs> Is there? Are you talking I've, to Tiff? I've, I'm. 
Ben talking about that. Ben, <laughs> what, what is wrong though? There's nothing. No, wrong. there's something on your there's, mind though there is, that you haven't there's said. Nothing wrong. Are you still scared of Big Cat? I'm focused. I'm not. We came yeah. back together yesterday. I, I literally uh, saw I, him one second. I was like, I'm sorry. I think he's scared. No. I I'm, think he's. Scared. I'm. I took my medicine earlier. That's usually what it is. Oh, every time okay, in this never situation. Mind. Yep. All right. Never mind. Then you're, uh, nothing is wrong. Then nothing is wrong. Yeah. He's, he's, I'm 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 focused. He's, focused. he's very focused. Something's wrong. No, I don't think so. That explains it all. That that's the conversation. He's very focused. Pretty much every so time. When I when I came That back, is true. Every time you take your medicine, you, we're like, dude, why what's fucking wrong with you? And you're like, nothing. I took the medication I'm prescribed to take. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, when Hank's healthy. <laughs> We're like, what the? fuck? It really does go like that. Well, it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm usually, you know, I have ADHD, and I'll have, you know, say things or be a little more outgoing, and then when I take my medicine, I'm just quiet. Yeah, and then we're like, speak. what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah I, actually, I did. and the resting anger face. That's where it gets me. My yeah. per my perfect Hank is when he hasn't slept for like three days. Yeah, and he just has no idea what's coming out of his mouth and just lets it fly. Yeah, I like that version. My perfect Hank is after he does comedy. Yeah, yeah, all all the way to the world office. Yeah. Shoulders. Feeling like a new man. There was there was a moment when I came into the office on on Saturday when we were starting the stream. I came straight from the airport and I got in the door and uh, it was like a morgue in the office because the the mood from last night on Friday was apparently well we lost everything and yeah. then I lost everything. Yeah, it was bad. We we could not have. I don't think anyone won a single thing on Friday. Well, actually, you did. Yeah, JMU. Friday, but no, party. it was we went we and went Purdue. No, Purdue Friday. I was we went high. Purdue, Purdue. We went. That Purdue cover was was. I I don't think anyone else really had it. I you know it was for me miraculous. Just when it was a it was a walk on guy that never plays hit a three when it didn't matter. Yeah, we and we went back to back on Friday night where we we got all whooped up for Will in Nebraska. What do you mean whooped up? Like everyone was like, let's go Nebraska. Like let's do this. And then it was just did you, so bad. Did you bet on Nebraska? Yes, just, just Will for support? Will. Yeah. Yes, literally, I was like, all week, I was like, I think Texas A&M is a better team. They're going to win this game. Yeah, it's a mistake. And then I was like, you know what? I, I said the quote, and I'll say it again, and I actually believe this. I will never be someone who wins money gambling. I have to be rich in friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's that was my whole plan was, like, I'm not – winners are never going to happen for me. Friendship is more important. So, I was – I fucking put on a fucking headband and I was like, let's do it. And then it just whew, fell flat so fast. Yeah, that sounds so like, fast. Sounds like bad vibes there. Yeah. I'm I'm actually glad I wasn't there on Friday because it would have been it would have been weird if everybody was losing everything and then I'm just like the happiest I've ever been watching a basketball game. Yeah, yeah, it was it was tough. It was tough, but that's March, and I I bounced back a day later. I'm I was back here just doing the thing. But yeah, it just sucks. It's sports. I, I wish I, I wish I didn't care as much as I cared. I, I am jealous of people who can compartmentalize and not let it bother them. I care a lot, and it just fucking sucks. I mean, you were you, like you were, today. You were you were down. Yeah, I was down. But but also in the grand scheme of things, house money. Yeah. Well, you did got not, a win. Did yeah. not expect yeah. to be there. Got a big win. Probably the biggest in in program history, and uh, got to see it. So I was I was feeling good. I was feeling okay. good. I'll feel better tomorrow. Now I'm a little bit down. But in the grand scheme of things, it's like this was a good march for him. Yeah, when Hank loses, he, ruins he doesn't the talk. Show. Yeah, he ruins the show. Yeah, so I mean, everyone deals with their losses different ways. Hank, are you okay? I'm good. You also a big cat. I mean, unfortunately. Oh, here it comes! Yes, here it yes, comes! Yes. All right, here it comes! Let it go, Hank. Finally, there was a point uh, when you were you were you were lashing out and you were like, "Fuck everyone that's texting me." Fuck you, Max Homa. Yeah. Fuck you, Khan. Well, these people I would were never texting do this. me. Wait. You do that all the time. No, I don't. When, when have I done that? When have I texted you right after a lot? We, we have to do oh, a no, show. Hank. We have to oh, do no, a Hank. show. We have to do a show. How many times have you texted that? Oh, oh no. Oh, wait, wait no, wait, regular now, season now that, game? That's with Max. It happens. It does happen all the time, but only to Max. But are we talking about playoffs? Because first of all, we're watching playoffs together. But like, if it's, yeah, Celtics game. If the Celtics blew. In the playoffs. Uh, yeah. I've done that. I've texted you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know think, specifically, I don't think that's true. Would. I yes, do not think would. that's true. And I also don't text random people. Like, you and I are, like, our relationship is different than fucking Spencer Hawes, who I haven't talked to in a year, just texting me out of nowhere, talking shit. That's a weird move. Captain Cons, I'm not going to talk to him for a year. Uh, would no. you text someone that you don't, like, talk to regularly? Uh, okay, but wait. In the no, middle no, no, of no. a bad loss? But wait, Big Cat. I would big not. Cat, big I cat. do not do I'm not that. Sure, I, I'm not sure if he also texted you individually, but he texted the group chat that we're on. 
where he no where, he added Frank where, Kaminsky where he says things about part of my take. I understand, but he added Frank Kaminsky and yeah. he started a new group chat. I do not te- when someone's losing in the middle of a game. I do not text them in the middle of the game, like a person I don't talk to. Is that not that, that's fair? That's do I, mean, I do that? Talk to. I don't talk like I was listing people who I don't talk to regularly. Rosillo tried, and they just start in Rosillo. Rosillo tried to face. Like, like I do that not was in, the, in, the, in the middle. This was in the middle of that. And it's yeah. not, and it's I, and, and I was like I was like difference. Ryan, hang up your phone. Like please don't FaceTime right now. He's like he's not gonna pick up. The like like even the Stanford Steve's SUP thing. Like that's Max a side. regular season game. If someone wanted to talk shit during a regular season game, I don't care. Scott, when Scott texts me after Maryland beats Wisconsin, I don't care. A tournament game. It sucked. Now it sucked but, a lot. But, but there, I didn't want to respond. There is a also ma- I didn't. There like is a max exception mean. to this. I just didn't respond. There is a max ex- exception because it, those texts do happen, but strictly with Max. Yeah, that's probably fair. But that also, you do that. You do that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, for sure. But would you ever text someone who you don't talk to regularly during a bad loss, talking shit? That is a crazy move to me. If it was like a friend, like if I, yeah, if it was a friend that that's a crazy I maybe move haven't to talked to in a year, but like, it yeah, was, the time was right. I, I might still. I think that's a crazy move. And like Twitter's totally different because you can just not look at Twitter. Like it's I know I'm going to get shit on Twitter. Who cares about Twitter? The text feels personal when someone texts you in the middle of a, a torture. Like if I have a, I have a friend that went to Virginia Tech that like we don't talk day to day. But You like, would do that? Virginia, yeah. I don't think I would. I, I would wait a day would. and then I would talk shit. Did you text Matt Jones from Kentucky during the loss? No. Okay. Fuck no. That would be crazy. Circumstantially, I, I'm not going to say I wouldn't because... I, I guess maybe... I, I don't know. I just can't think of the time where I've done that to someone I don't regularly talk to. The only exception being if my team's playing their team. If so, if yeah. like, if BFD texts me, that's totally fine. If it's... Like, that's that makes sense. If your team is involved, but like third party out of nowhere text that I haven't talked to this person in mm. months. I'm like, I'm not responding to that. Yeah. And I didn't do, I didn't, like, I, I, it wasn't like I responded, fuck you, don't ever talk to me again. I'm just not responding. Yeah. Would you respond to that? Would you text someone you don't talk to? I, I well, so Marty texted me during this game, but he's a Duke fan. Right. And then I was just like, hey, I don't want to. That's kind of expected. Yeah, you like, lashed I, out. Yeah. I, I just said, I, why is he texting me? I don't want right. to respond to this. But, no, it's I, if your team's playing the other person's team, that I, I think that's, that's totally fair. Uh, but yeah, we should just clarify that with Max. This is a, that's fine. It, Max does not apply to these rules. Yeah, Max. Max we, what would you do? We get ninety percent of our joy on this people? podcast out of out of doing that exact thing to Max. Would you text a random person you haven't talked to in a while? Uh, and again, it's not like I hate these people. I just am not going to respond. There's one kid in particular that I'm thinking of that I would. So it sounds but, like everyone has one. Mine's Max. But <laughs> sounds like you're a lot of people's one person. I well, yeah, I knew, I know it's coming. When when like the Twitter, like when everyone shits on my throat, I know it's coming. I can deal with it. It's the text just feels personal, so I'm just not gonna respond. When Homer texted us, I I just wanted to respond to be polite, but I did not expect you to respond to it. At yeah, all. I also will, I will text someone during a loss, being like, "You're Him getting texting screwed. both of you." Changed it as well I because it's a well. Yeah, I get it. I get the joke. Thing, yeah. I got the joke. I'll, I'll text someone like cons- consoling them. Like when Titus, when that, when uh, Ohio State lost that game in the Big Ten championship, I texted him like an hour later. I was like, the foul discrepancy is insane. Like you guys got fucked. Actually, this was a funny text from Max Oma. This is to me and Big Cat at nine thirty on I didn't, Friday. I thought it was kind of vanilla. Hey, just wanted to let you know I'm watching the game and I'm rooting for your team. I know he'll be bad. But that makes it even better. Oh shoot! I didn't mean to send this to both of you guys. That's like, all right. I mean, you do that all the time. Yeah, with I know. Rico. <laughs> with Rico, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all right. So that's what was on your. What else? What else are you mad at me for? <laughs> no, no, no. It seems like you're very mad. No, I, I get it. That was my only note. My only note. Yeah. We did come to an, uh We had a we had a long conversation before. The outburst was pregame, which I thought were still, you know, yeah, within within the lines of of yeah. I thought that Hank did something in the, in the like laws of engagement. During no, the game. he just asked me over and over in the kitchen, "Will you be mad if I if I go really hard?" And I said yes over and over, and then he'd ask me a different way, and I'd say yes. Mm-hmm. And it was like we had the same conversation for maybe twenty minutes, where I was like, 
I don't know how I can answer this differently than I care a lot. I really want to win this game. Mm -hmm. So you got pre mad at him. Well, because it was like I was talking to like he was just basically going to ask the question until I was like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> but it was never going to happen. <laughs> but the irony in this is that Big Cat did actually get mad at you for asking him if he would get mad at you. Because he asked me so many times. Yeah. You asked him if he would get mad too many times. So many times that it was like, I can't. I don't. There's nothing I can do here. We're not going to ever see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. But that was, you know. Months ago, at this point, yeah, that, I, I, True. I moved it. I moved on. What when I saw you, I was like, I can't be mad at you. I saw your face, yeah. cute ass face, on Saturday morning. Oh, see, so we're mad. You went to you went to bed mad. I went to bed in the worst mood ever. You can't. You never go to bed mad. I went to. It's like, I feel like I'm pretty good for a really really bad mood for about twelve hours after a bad loss, and then I can move on. Isn't that not fair? Can we all agree that's fair? Yeah. That's that's a that feels like it's a fair thing to do. Tw sure. Twelve hours, twenty four hours. I mean, Hank, you are in a bad mood when you lose. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, right. That's not. Na yeah, that's natural. We just have to sometimes get on here and talk about it. Like I would have, it would I would have talked about it on Friday night if we had the show, and it would have been similar. We suck. It would have been it would have been a bad show if we had done that. On Friday. I thought about hitting you guys up and be like time capsule. Should we record? Something? <laughs> it would have been the same thing. It would have just been we suck. That sucked. It was torture. No, but I would have been so happy. Yeah. Well, you still were happy today. You, I was. Ha I came in happy. I woke yeah. up happy this morning. Yeah, you were happy yesterday. I was happy. I got all your was, happiness. I've been happy for the last week and a half. Sports has made me happy every day for the last week and a half, and now sports has made me sad. Not me. Everything sucks. Everything fucking sucks. I feel like Max. Max, I would have rather had Max's way out. The NIT would have been way better. No one gives a fuck. Wisconsin went to the final four of the NIT last year. No one gave a fuck. It's so much better to not have, like, a very public, everyone's watching your failure. And the Friday night time slot is the worst. Because we had to wait for a you full have to two days. Wait, and then and then it's like all everyone thinks about after the, fir the, the conclusion of the first round mm -hmm. is that. And everyone's like, man, that was bad. Yeah. And I just sat or, there with it. Or if you're good, you're like, man, that was Yeah, good. no, it's great for and you. And then you do something dumb like uh, put a bet on JMU to win the national championship right afterwards. Yeah. I did get one guy, one email from a guy. Now I have to look at that future for the rest of the tournament. That's brutal. Because it doesn't cash out or it doesn't cancel out until, yeah. I got an email from one guy who was like, the Badgers suck and I hope you die and your kids die. And I was like, that felt a little far. But everyone else was totally fair to just shit on me. Mm -hmm. I deserved it. My team was an embarrassment to watch. And I'm sorry that people had to watch it. That's how bad I felt. When you have to say sorry to... We were watching in the cave. I had to move it to the little TV. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want you guys to have to watch this anymore. Yeah. We did that today with the Duke JMU game too. It was bad. It's, it's embarrassing. It was bad. All right. So it seems like we're good, Hank. You were holding that in for a long time. I you got it out. I, yeah, I could tell that something. Yeah, was no, going I on. could too. There was I something. mean, no, that's just not true. But we're good. Yeah. And now we're on to bigger and better things. You got your beloved Duke. Yeah. Now you're playing. Duke. Now you're Duke. Duke. <laughs> I want Hank. I want Dukey Hank back. Hank's just taking off a series of masks in the first Dude. one. <laughs> He's just ripped off the JMU mask. I'm a Duke fan all along. Hank is. I love Duke. Hank is electric. Let's go to the Final Four. Duke yeah. Hank. Fuck yeah. Just get, get the jumpsuit back. I got. I actually got rid of my Duke stuff when I moved. Or I had one sweatshirt left, and I, it didn't make the cut. I think that if Duke loses to Houston, you should have to jump in that pool. And put a new hole in her. And and then run to the shower. <laughs> I'm going to Dallas, but we'll see. Yeah, You're no, going to Dallas, buddy. You, you got you to gotta jump in the pool and then run through the house to the shower Saturday. and try not to fall. You have a tea time in Dallas? Here. It's going to be like 70 degrees. No, tea time Wild means winter. like Tiffany. It's an abbreviation. It's got tea time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did snow. That was the other. Th it snowed on Friday here, and I was just like, I woke up and I was like, "Fucking Hank." Yeah, but he's right. It's been a mild winter. He has called it. All right, let's do who's back of the week, and then we'll get to our interviews. Okay, who's back of the week is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. We have the chill calendar, the chill calendar for uh, March Madness. Got it right here. We opened up the first two on Thursday's show, right on Friday. Yes. So. All right, so we got how many more now? Three more? Do we have, yeah, we have, uh, it's the, what, uh, so how one? many, uh, yeah, three more? Or are we doing two more? I don't know how days work. Okay. I don't know how it works either. Reserved. My bracket kicked off today, and I have enough on my mind without someone trying to steal my seat. 
while I go to the bathroom. Oh, I like that. Seat saver. So you put that in a bar. Seat saver. While you're having a nice Seats cold take. Coors Light. Take. How many are we opening, Max? Uh, it's more than that because the playing games were, were one and two. One and two. Oh, so. so. so just tell me when to stop. Oh. Tell so, them when to stop. So Thursday, Ooh. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So four. Monday. I got a foam. No, five. Five. Because I got a, today's Monday. I got a oh, yeah. foam finger right here that's the size of a normal finger. It says we're number one. Actually, Hank, this is this is Duke colors. Mm. If you want an extra Ready finger. go. Do you want an extra finger for this weekend? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, by the way, when you choose Coors Light, Choose to rise above it all. Choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. What's the next one? Some chill tea. Chill tea. Some chill tea. Here you go for your tea time, Hank. Chill tea. And then we're doing six. Last one. Six. Oh, this is, this is a big one. We got a flop sweat bracket poncho. Oh, like a placemat for your for your bracket, so you don't spill stuff on it. Ooh, we had some bracket accidents, some accidents recently, and uh, some coffee, some body armor got spilled on some uh, Coors Light got spilled on some of the brackets. This is perfect. Keep your brackets safe. Okay, beautiful. So thank you to Coors Light and the Chill Calendar. Again, when you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Who's back of the week, Hank? My who's back of the week is Rat Beef. Rap Beef or Rat Beef? Rap, rap Beef. Rap, rap Beef. I'm rap sure you guys are caught up. I'm very interested to hear uh, whose side you're on between future Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Drake. Okay. Uh, uh... Say it again. Give us our options again. Future, Future Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Metro Boomin, Metro, Metro Boomin, Boomin yeah. Drake, Drake, J. Cole. I J. think Cole. I think I'm on Drake's side. I like Metro Boomin. Was that right? I mean, it's it's you know it's it's what's the beef? Dealer's <laughs> choice. Okay. Uh, Whose side are you on? I think I'm on on Future and and Kendrick. Oh, so it's two v two? Shit, I should have said future. I think it's really two v one. So future and Metro Boomin released an album that was basically all a response to Drake, and there was a song that Kendrick Lamar was featured on where he took direct shots at Drake. So it's kind of you know it's a it's mm -hmm. a civil war situation. There's obviously interpersonal beefs in between the big beef, but it's, Drake is the big beef. It's basically future and Metro. I've Boomin seen the video. Drake got it. Apparently, it's over a girl, but who knows. Wait, so I picked future by picturing, p yeah. pitching, picking Metro Boomin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got two for one. Yeah. All right. Whose side are you on? He said future. Mm -hmm. And Metro Boomin. Metro, Metro Boomin. Boomin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. I now feel confident knowing that I can walk around and if someone asks me this question, I'm like, future. Drake. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damn, dude! Is this, Podcast of is this the be start? Is this the, uh, Hank, be careful who you root for. Be careful, Hank. Don't don't you fucking root for Future in front be of me. Be careful. You don't care about Future. Be careful. Uh, my who's back of the week is Dosa Cero. The U.S. Men's National Team won the. Uh, I think this are it's a three peat for us in the Concacaf Nations League Cup Final Trophy. I don't know. It's a made up tournament that Concacaf made up, but we beat Mexico two to nothing, which is always awesome when we beat them two to nothing. So. Our team's really fucking good. Our team's awesome. Tyler Adams is good. Our coach is a shithead. Gio Reyna is awesome, too. Um, we got a really good team. I'm still – I'm staying my prediction that we need to make it – if we don't make it to at least the quarterfinals in the next World Cup, massive disappointment. Is there soccer in the Olympics? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there is. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. No one really what cares What tournament was this? Is the Nations League final cup trophy CONCACAF. No, thanks. Yeah, no, it was, it was, but USA winning Dos Acero was always good against Mexico. Yeah, I just, uh, what, say it again? Dos Acero. No, 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 I know that part. The trophy of the CONCACAF League of no. Nations final. If it's more than like four words, I'm out. I think it's, I think the actual name for it is the CONCACAF Nations League Cup. Yeah. Anyways, it's, it's a made Ow. up. It's a made up tournament that yeah, happened. Sounds invented so made up. A few years ago, because that's what Concacaf does, just to get more TV stuff. But we beat Mexico. I like beating Mexico, and our young guys look awesome. We had probably the goal of the year from Tyler Adams. He shot one from like thirty five yards out, fucking knuckleball rocket. It was great. So goal of the year. I'm buying. Stock. Only in March. I'm buying stock. 
I'm buying stock in the national team. Um, okay, my who's back of the week is Caitlin Clark. We had the women's tournament start, and uh, I I am so excited for Caitlin Clark in Iowa to keep advancing because it's getting nuclear. Caitlin Clark headbutted a ball. A ball? Yeah. People were like, "What a brat!" Disgusting. I was like, "What? I don't. How is that a brat?" She was frustrated. Did she headbutt out of frustration or out of? Was she it was out of frustration. They were okay. struggling with Holy Cross. Uh -huh. They she, were up like twenty. Was she mad at the ball? It's just it's gotten to a point where I don't even know how how people have found this much hate in their heart for someone. Again, I like it though. Yeah, no, I do too. But it's it's out of control. Yeah, I love it's it. Out of control. I actually love it. I love it when when you can hate a female athlete enough to have takes on it for. Her. Yeah. She she has like Duke times ten hate. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, also, women's tournament because Kim Mulkey uh, did a press conference saying she's got a hit piece going against her, but it's not out yet. It was so it was an interesting strategy on her part. No idea what the article is going to be about, but I want to read it now. Now I want to read it. Oh yeah, I did not care about this article until I heard about it because Kim Mulkey did a press conference to talk about how no one should read the article that's going to come. Yes, out. I would agree with that. Interesting strategy, Kim. Yeah. Did you guys see the story from uh, the referee in Chattanooga versus NC State women? Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. They pulled the ref at halftime because they realized that she went to school to ch at Chattanooga. Yeah, she got her That's master's nuts. there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you're supposed to disclose it, and she didn't disclose it That's beforehand. Nuts. It's just crazy that they pulled her in the middle of the game. Yeah. I I like that's a win for integrity though. Absolutely. I wonder yeah. who I wonder who found out about that. You know what? I bet I bet it was somebody online. I bet somebody online, like a real freak, a real like diehard fan, was like, This ref has given us the worst calls. I'm gonna look up her bio. And then they're like, Oh shit, she actually went to that school. I bet yeah. it was like a, a golf thing where they called in the violation and they took action. So, yeah, I don't know who alerted who in the middle of the game, but it happened. Respect. Oh, also, um, Donald Trump's back because he won another club championship this weekend. Yeah, he, I don't know if you saw it. Dude's the best golfer it was of all time. Deep field. Deep field. Uh, some of the. It was a very golfing field. He said. I actually respect the fuck out of him just having tournaments that he wins because I would do the same thing. Yeah. If I had my own club, I would just be like, "Yeah, let's all play, and I'm gonna win. I won again, and I want everyone to do a gala for me after mm -hmm. where I get my trophy. I, yeah, I think he won. Win it. He won a couple days ago, but now he's doing a big ceremony tonight, presenting himself with the trophy. That rocks. Yeah, that's if you if you have a fuckload of money and you don't do stuff like that and you don't. You either have to own a sports team yeah. or you have to constantly dominate your friends at sports where you get to decide the rules. I said that I've said this before, but I, I our old friend Jared Carabas, uh, if I was like a billionaire, I'd build a uh I'd build a baseball field in my backyard and I would have I would pay him a million dollars where he had to pitch to me like whenever I wanted. I'd just call him up, be like, You gotta come pitch to me, but he had to fucking let me just hit dingers off him. Mm -hmm. So every day I could just be like, I wanna hit a few dingers call him up and he's got to give me just the the worst and he's got to act like he's upset mm -hmm. and like god damn it not again but wait big cat at the stadium that you would build would you pay for your own fucking stadium i would pay for my own fucking stadium that'd be so sick it'd probably be wiffle ball if i'm being honest oh i love wiffle ball fields that look like <laughs> yeah. that look like major league yeah. baseball fields yeah if we're being honest it would be a wiffle yeah, ball field for sure cool. uh all right jake your who's back my who's back of the week is michigan basketball yes we have the coaching carousel begin and recurring guest dusty may is going from fau to ann arbor people thought he was gonna go to indiana he's an indiana boy wouldn't it be so confusing if dusty may like he was a new tom Izzo, so it was january february <laughs> may yeah april, april may. may yeah we sleep in may yeah, yeah we sleep in may john rothstein's for sure gonna do that rossi was almost on the court yeah the end of the rossi was was playing defense against the, the <laughs> inbound guy yeah I got comment from uh, our colleague White Boy Rick, who's an Indiana fan, because Indiana fans, I think they Dusty May was on their list. He's they, a loser, right? Yeah, he he. I think he what he was on. He was a manager on one of the Bobby Knight teams, maybe. Yeah, one of the I last think so. ones. Uh, either way, I asked him for comment, and he said because I was like, "Oh, that sucks. You probably had Dusty May on your list if you had fired Mike Woodson." He had a great response. He said, "No, this is good. He's going to prove that he can win with the big boys. Then he'll take the Indiana job." Which is an even bigger boy. So Michigan's just stepping stone for Indiana. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love the Indiana delusion. It's he's going to go. He's going to win a couple Big Ten titles. What, beating Indiana, mm -hmm. and then he's going to be like, I want to join Indiana. Well, that's what Brad Stevens is doing. He, he got to the NBA, learned how to coach in the NBA. Then he transitioned to front office, so he learns how to assemble a great team. Right. And now that he's got like a full 360-degree view of how to actually run an operation, 
then he'll come back to Indiana. Obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, with with uh, Dusty May, mm-hmm. I I was thinking about this when they announced the hiring. Is he automatically a Michigan man, or do you have well, to? Dave tweeted Michigan man. Do you so. have to prove yourself? Do you have to do something Michigan? No, he's definitely. He's also probably not tall enough to be a Michigan man, if we're honest. You Michigan men tall? are usually tall. Yeah, they're Harbaugh like. Okay. Yeah. So football and basketball for Michigan. Like Dave is not. Dave probably is same. Dave's not a Michigan he's man. Probably not tall enough. Real Michigan men. You have to earn your like man. Strong stock. Mm-hmm. I'll never be. I a like Michigan the high. No, you'll never be a Michigan I man. Think be, <laughs> I don't want to be Michigan. I think man. they're going to be back quickly. Okay. Yeah. No, he's a great coach. Mm-hmm. He's a great coach. Great guy. Is he going to bring Golden with him? Yeah, all those guys still have eligibility, so it'll be interesting to see if he brings any of those guys from FAU, from Boca to Ann Arbor. Yeah, I would not go. I'll just say that if I was, <laughs> yeah, if I was Golden, but and I'd be like, do I want to move to Michigan and away from the beach? No. Counterpoint: He could become a Michigan man. He is a Michigan. He's tall enough. He yeah. could be a Michigan man for life. I'd rather be a Florida man. Florida men have way more fun. Yeah. Get to do way better drugs in Florida. Um, all right, let's get to our interviews. We got two great ones with uh, Jack Golke and DJ Burns, and then on the other side we'll wrap up the show. Maybe we we'll talk about the coach's picture real quick because I still have to do that blog. Let's so you do guys it. Can give me some help before we get to Jack Golke. He's brought to you by our great friends over at Visible. Ever wish you could call foul on your wireless carrier for their hidden fees? Then it's time to switch to Visible. Switch to Visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide. Get one line wireless with unlimited five G data powered by Verizon. Just $25 a month, every month, taxes and fees included. That's a great deal. You get one line wireless, just $25 a month, taxes and fees included. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. No hidden fees, no gotchas, unlimited 5G data, powered by by Verizon. Don't let hidden fees stop you from being a fan of wireless. Switch to Visible and save. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. And now, here's Jack Wolke. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He captured the hearts of America for about 48 hours. It is uh, Jack Wolke from Oakland, who had the huge upset on Thursday night at Kentucky. Lost in overtime on Saturday night, which we apologize for. We were pulling for you very, very hard, Jack. But we still wanted to have you on because I well, we'll start here. And you can tell me if this is wrong or not. But you were built in a lab to be the perfect March Madness guy. Like, the the look, the team, the beating Kentucky, the fact that literally every shot you take is a made three. Uh, did you know that going in? You're like, if I have a good game, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take over the country for a day? Uh, well, first off, thanks for having me on, guys. This is awesome. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I guess looking back on it, I didn't really expect that or think about it that way. But now that you kind of lay it all out and – I mean, you see all the memes and all the just everything going around. I would have never expected all that, but it all kind of just fit together, like you said. And um, yeah, I guess the story just it was just too perfect. And people saying it's an industry plant and all that <laughs> stuff is just crazy. Yeah, CIA op. Yeah, you were. You're an industry <laughs> plant. And you know what? I enjoyed every second of the CIA op. I I, I really did. I got caught up in Golki mania. Yeah. Uh, I the, they finally did something right. Yeah. <laughs> the stat that was going viral was uh was your your breakdown of three point attempts to two point attempts this season. So you attempted two two point or excuse me, eight two point shots all year long. Uh do you do you even practice mid range? So I I tell my teammates this year, I'm like, hey guys, I, I used to shoot twos. I used to make a couple twos a game, but they just do not believe me. <laughs> um ever since the year started, Coach Campy just kind of set me up as as the three point specialist. And to be honest, this whole season I have, I really haven't gone in the gym and shot many twos. It's yeah, pretty yeah. much just get in there, get a couple of form shots and then start launching threes. So does that mess with your foul shooting at all? Cause I've always thought like if, a, if a guy's a three point specialist at some point, he's not, he's not working on mid range games. So that could impact you from the foul line. We were, we we're actually saying that you should take your foul shots from the very, very top of the key, like yeah. back up five feet. I, I I definitely should, man. I mean, this was my worst free throw shooting year in in a long time. So something was something was definitely up. Maybe I should have just been shooting them from half court or something. You're yeah. too close. Yeah, you were too <laughs> close. So ba- going back to Thursday night because it was it was an incredible game taking down Kentucky. I the way I put it is like, you know, all those Kentucky guys are gonna a lot of them are gonna go on to be pros, make millions and millions of dollars. But you basically you and your teammates can be like, yeah, we had them one night. We took it. We took them down one night, and that's one of the coolest (laughs) things. That's why we love this tournament. At what point in the game, though, 
were you guys like, wait, we can play with them. Like this is not this is not going to be a game where they can just overpower us. Yeah, I think the first couple minutes of the game, they did a really good job of kind of imposing their will as as Kentucky as like a power five school where they just kind of fed the ball inside and, and got a couple quick buckets on us. But I think it was probably like the third media timeout. So like about halfway through the first half where we might have been tied or or down one, something like that. And we we're just like, hey, if we've hung with them for 10 minutes, like we might as well just go out here and, and do this thing. Like, yeah, let's, mm-hmm. let's just go do it. Let's shock the nation and have some fun with it. And and we kind of just ran with it from there. Yeah. Were you were you at any point? Did you feel at any point that you were in the zone? Because it felt like that. Because some of the shots you were making were ridiculous, where it's like, no one should be shooting this, like falling away, <laughs> hand in the face, being, you know, guys trying to run after you. Did you feel like you had reached the zone at any point? Yeah, it was just a classic game for me if for anyone who's like watched my career they know I miss open threes and I make the hardest threes yes and I don't know why that is <laughs> but uh I yeah I there was a time in the first half I think I made like three or four in a row and a couple of them I kind of threw up and didn't even see them go in I kind of thought they were bricks and then everyone was just like cheering and I was like okay I'll take it like let's <laughs> yeah. roll that's incredible did, did you know you were going to be wet before the game like in warm-ups were you like yeah tonight's tonight's the night uh, I was feeling good. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the Kentucky guys were chirping me a little bit in warmups because of some comments I made in the, in the pregame interviews. So at that point I was like, okay, I, I got to show out today or else I'm going to be getting clowned the entire game. Would you say pregame? So I, in the, in the pregame interview, like, I guess it was the day before pre-practice uh, they were, people were asking me about Kentucky and, and I told them uh, like, they're obviously a tremendous shooting team shoot the best percentage in the country, but I think our team shoots it better. And they just ran with that. Their their fans said, "Oh, this is ridiculous." Blah blah blah. So then before the game, their players were just saying, "Like you better you better have a good night, or else uh, you can't be saying stuff like that." And then they didn't really say anything the entire game. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, you were what, dead right. What is what is your range? Man, as soon as you walk in the gym, you got to start firing them. <laughs> anywhere anywhere my teammates are gonna pass me the ball, I'm putting it up. Yeah. And we by the way, so the other part of the perfect like your industry plan for March Madness. You had an NIL deal almost like 10 seconds after you got off the court. You also, we you go buy the shirts in our Barstool store. We did an NIL deal with Jack. Uh, yeah. uh, so those are those are live right now. But what? how quickly did that all take place? Like, was it just you were in the locker room and you're like, all right, now I got to do an ad tomorrow? <laughs> no, you guys are going to love this. So my phone obviously was just blowing up. I didn't even want to look at it. A couple of my buddies are just like, dude, we'll just set up an email for you and we'll do it all. So I didn't even see any of it. It was just, it was just them going through these emails and being like, "Oh, let's do this one. Let's do this one. This is a good one. This is a bad one." That's so incredible. They, just, they they picked it's just my two two dumb guys just running the <laughs> running the email, picking a TurboTax, and I go in the hotel ballroom and shoot a video, and everyone's telling me it's so amazing because it's so bad. Oh, yeah, that's well, so the, perfect. The, the TurboTax can that contributed to the the conspiracies out there because like. Wait, now he's doing an ad where he's just getting the government paid. Yeah. You're doing an ad right before <laughs> we have to pay our taxes right yeah. now. But it was that credit to your dumb friends because that's like that's a, a pretty good NIL deal to to just have come through at the last second. No, yeah. Shout out to them. They they made it happen. Yeah, that's oh, that's perfect. Yeah, so what's what's next for you? What what do you have on the horizon right now? Um, so I just uh got invited to the final four to do a three point contest there. So I'm yeah, excited okay. for that. That'll do, be fun. Do you need one of us to put a hand in your face? for it because like I, the, like I, you said i think i would shoot better yeah, yeah i would appreciate that <laughs> come out yeah. uh yeah so may, maybe i'll run into you guys out there that would be awesome yeah um yeah. and then after that just uh gonna try to play pro i have no idea where the, i'm gonna end up but just gonna kind of go through the the process during the summer and maybe i'll be overseas maybe i'll be you know g league or whatever it is but just gonna try to keep playing basketball and and avoid the car salesman or uh insurance jobs as long as possible yeah I, I think i said on the stream last night i was like this guy is so perfect like he probably already has a job at deloitte lined up um <laughs> but, like, but i i i want yeah i mean i want to i want more jack Golke on the on the uh basketball court i also said uh i i was like we have to hire him so i think you have a standing job <laughs> offer here i i kind of got creepy though i was like i don't even I don't even want him to do anything. I just want to have him. And like, whenever someone comes over, we're just like, "Hey, you want to see our guy shoot some threes? No, it's like, like we got a goalkeeper. Here. <laughs> yeah, we would be like, "Okay, here's our popcorn machine yeah. right there. There's the gambling cave. There's our goalkeeper. Yeah, you're just, you're just, you're just like, watch just, this. Your job is just hit threes all day long. 
Well, I'll just be a prop, and then if I miss a couple threes, you guys just got to kick me to the curb. I mean, we yeah. might we might need you if we ever have to do the free throw competition again. Like that, you'll be the first call. Yeah, but, sh- but take yeah, the shots from the three-point line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, free throws for everybody else. I'll shoot deep threes. Uh, did you get a text from J.J. Watt? I did. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Oh, of course he's trying to get. Yeah. He's trying to get in the limelight here. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, what do you say? On, I should have. Uh, hey, JJ, them. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been. Oh, that would have been. That would have been like flashbacks for him. Yeah, he was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> did you Did you grow up like watching JJ Watt play in the NFL? Oh yeah, I mean he. Uh, so I'm trying to think what year he graduated high school, but I, I saw him a little bit in high school. I saw him uh, at Wisconsin, and obviously he was at Central Michigan before that. But, yeah, he was just an absolute sensation in Pewaukee. Everyone everyone knows J.J. Watt. Everyone knows T.J. Watt. Those guys are just – Derek. Those, they're the top standard in, in Pewaukee, yeah. Did you did you ever think that – did you ever try to go to Madison? Because I would have loved the goalkie in my life uh, for, <laughs> for the team I root for. Uh, they never, they never really reached out, Fucking so that wasn't idiots. really, uh, oh. that wasn't in the cards. But they, they don't recruit Wisconsin very well. I'm sure you know that. Ah, oh, we need to get, we, you know, we need to get you an extra COVID year. Would you play? <laughs> I just want to watch more goalkey, just hitting three. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get even more shit for how old I am if I can, if I do one more year. <laughs> yeah. No one, no one's gonna complain. Like you could, you could play in the next three March Madnesses, and people would be like, awesome, more goalkey. Yeah. Keep more goalkey going, and then uh, so a question. Obviously, the NC State game didn't didn't go your guys' way. You guys fought your asses off, went to overtime. I I noticed though, obviously, like it was clear that NC State was like, we cannot let this guy be open ever. Did you notice it from the jump, like that it was totally different than the Kentucky game, where Kentucky almost no shots at Cal, but it felt like they didn't really understand that you could hit anything. NC State was like, there was a guy glued to you, and you still scored. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely different from Kentucky. Kentucky was just guarding in a, in a different way that um, you don't typically guard like really good shooters. But NC State, they just they said we're gonna get physical, we're gonna foul until the refs call it. And I mean, credit to them, they were just physical the entire game and kind of mucking things up. And and I was just trying to get loose in transition because they were doing such a good job in the half court of of just ruining everything to be honest so just try to get loose in half court pump fake have the guys fly by and luckily it worked a couple times but i wish we could have made a couple more down the stretch obviously yeah when you did the pump fake every pump fake and we also had a rule in the gambling cave because we're like you know we were watching games for four days and i told everyone they cannot say like you know wet or anything like that unless it's a gulky shot because i've never been more (laughs) confident that nc state game you had one shot where it didn't even leave your hands and i was like Good three, good, and it was just like <laughs> I was like the only person I'll do that for is like Steph Curry and Golki. That's it. I love it. I'll I'll take that comparison any day of the week, man. Do, do you have like a favorite thing that you say right as the ball leaves your hands? Like some people say water, some people say butter, <laughs> wet, wop. I I usually say like like why did you let me get that off? Like, oh, yeah, I like, like that. <laughs> like, why like are you that. letting me shoot? You that? know better than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just scold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little scold. Yeah, that's a good one. What? What? Um. So, are you still in school? You're not in school. Are you in school? <laughs> I mean, technically, but at this point, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to lock in, guys. I'm yeah, not gonna lie to you. I would imagine. Yeah, we. I I do want to get out of one uh, ahead of one thing. I I might have said you you were said on Thursday night we're not a Cinderella. I loved that. I was like, let's go. <laughs> Your your uh, Oakland tough look, tough o- look. But Oakland's president had a Cinderella slipper in front of her, and in the heat of the moment, I might have said some things that were you know anger induced. So I just want to apologize to that. If you ever see her walking around, just be like, hey, that guy didn't mean that. <laughs> he was just rooting really hard for Golki. What about so your coach also was a great story. When you what was the process? Because you were at Hillsdale for uh, four years, then you end up going to Oakland. What was what sold you on Oakland? Was it was it coach? Yeah, I mean, he he's just had a tremendous history of of guys like me that just shoot a bunch of threes. And, I mean, you guys have probably heard of, like, Max Hooper and maybe even Travis Bader, guys that just launched threes. And he he just called me and, and said, hey, I want you to watch this film with me and see, like, what these guys have done in the past. I think it'll be a good role for you. And I just watched it, and I was like, it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, you, <laughs> you guys know how it is. Like, if you can just go out there and launch threes, it's – it's a it's a good life, so it, it fit really well. And I was just like, I'm not going to find a better place than this, and I think we could be really successful. I had, yeah. a, I had a theory that you went there because their their half court logo is so big at your gym <laughs> that you were like, I'm going to hit all the logo threes. No, you always got to walk when you walk in a gym, and you got to look for the logos and be like, which spot is the most strategic for me to hit some logo threes <laughs> where I'm really only two feet behind the line. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think Oakland might have maybe the number one gym in America with that. Oh yeah, we got we got the Michigan. 
state thing out there where you can be you can be like one and a half feet behind the line and you're shooting a logo three and then if you're shooting from the bear you can be like three feet so you can get a bunch of them up for sure i love it that's love great it. um all right well last question rowback question rhoback.com promo code take 20 percent off your first purchase q-zips polos hoodies joggers shorts rowback.com promo code take if i told you open gym uh 100 threes let's say for let's say hypothetically it's a like high school line uh and it's actually it's actually our office 100 threes how many are you making high school line honestly yeah. i'm pr i'm probably making more at the college line than the high school line oh. cuz i just haven't shot high school line in 5 6 years okay so you could step back you can shoot from wherever but how many you're making empty gym okay empty gym i'm going to set the line at I'd say like 78 and a half. Okay. Well, we open invite uh, to come to Chicago and let's do that video because I mean, it's, you know, our, hour and 15 drive from Pewaukee. Whenever you're back, come on down. We'll do it. 78 and a half. I'm taking the over. Yeah. Probably the over on that yeah. one. I'm taking the over. All okay. Day. okay. I, I'm telling you, I'm making, if you if you want threes off the, off the move and sprinting, I'll make 90, but okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Yes. I love it. All right. So <laughs> I, we're doing it. I actually think we could put you at one end and then put maybe, uh, like our worst player at the other end with one basketball and you would outscore him. If all that other guy had to do was just hit layups over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this yeah. Let's do that. Actually. I guarantee you, I will make more threes than your worst player makes. Maybe, maybe All right. Hanks. We'll do a Jerry after dark. Oh yeah. Hank yeah. is our Hank. worst player. Hank's our worst player. <laughs> He's, He's a bad athlete. Far. You know that yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I've right. seen it all. Well, Jack, thank you so much, man. Uh, we we really enjoyed watching you play, and, and best of luck. And we we got to have you come to the office and do a challenge. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks for having me on, guys, and I'm excited to come in. That'll be a lot of fun. Awesome, Jack. Goalkeeper is brought to you by Top Golf. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. If you've never heard of them, they have all the stuff to make them legit golf: balls, clubs, turf, even a ball picker upper cart thing. But they're very much not golf, too. We're talking loud music, giant targets, climate-controlled bays, and unbeatable food and drinks day or night. There are a lot of big sports moments coming up soon, especially in March if you're into college basketball and baseball. So if you want to catch the games as you play, Top Golf is the place. Since they want everyone to play, they just launched Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday when you book in their app. All you have to do is book a Monday through Wednesday in their app, and you're going to get half off the golf. Of course, even they have some rules. Half off golf Monday through Wednesday applies to gameplay only, isn't offered at the Vegas venue, and it's only available when you book in their app. For full details on the offer, visit topgolf.com slash PMT. That's topgolf.com slash PMT. And now here's DJ Burns. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. He is starting center for NC State, the Sweet 16 bound NC State. Wolfpack. It is DJ Burns. DJ, uh, congratulations, first of all. And second of all, are you tired yet? Because you guys have won now seven games in 12 days. It's an incredible run. Are you tired? Uh, I, I'm not too tired yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Good. It, it, it's been a wild run, like going back to the ACC tournament, watching you guys really like play your way into form. Uh, it was awesome. Like watching you run through that tournament at some point, did you feel yourself like going into the tournament? Did you know that you had it in you to make a run or did it take a little momentum? Maybe, you know, like hit a big shot against UVA to really buy in and believe that this team can be, you know, a special team. Uh, yeah, I definitely say we, we knew we could do it, but, um, that shot definitely sent us right over the top, man. That was the point where we knew, um, we just needed to fight a little bit more and we were going to get it done. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, yeah, like the run is insane. Last night, you guys play in overtime. You play 42 minutes, 24 points, 11 rebounds. Like it's just been, it's been so much fun to watch. Do you ever find uh, when guys go up against you, like, do they visibly, can you tell when you got them when they're so frustrated because your moves are so smooth and your touch, like everything you throw up at the rim goes in. Do you know when you're like, all right, I got them. They, they can't stop me. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but I'd say I can tell definitely when they begin to, you know, um, I can tell when they get frustrated because that's when they'll start to, you know, say little slick things under their breath, like, you know, to themselves, like they try to, you know, hype themselves up. But when we're having a game like that, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to not keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like you don't get the calls that you deserve. Sometimes they ref you a little bit different sometimes. 
And sometimes the uh, the other team's strategy just becomes like, see if you can take a charge from DJ. But meanwhile, they're like, they're hugging you. They're grabbing your arms. Do you have to like dial yourself back? Because I know you get frustrated sometimes when you don't get like the Zach Eady treatment on those whistles. Do you have to hold yourself back sometimes? Or do you talk to the refs and let them know like, hey, this guy's just tackling me every time I get the ball? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been told by them that I'm hard to ref sometimes because of, you know, being bigger than everyone and everything like that. So um, I understand it, but, you know, it is frustrating. I oftentimes have to catch myself getting frustrated and reel it back in for sure. Yeah. Um, I got to I gotta stand uh, up for you for one moment in this run. I thought CBS did you dirty when they tried to give you ice cream after the game. They tried to set you up. That was wrong. Uh, I'll keep my comments to myself on that. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll just say it. I'll say it was wrong. It's been like, but I, I know that you guys sometimes do ice cream after wins. Have you guys, I hope in the locker room, have you guys said anything to coach being like, we've made you so much money on this run? <laughs> because like, I keep seeing every single win. It's like, you know, Kevin Keats gets another bonus. He gets a two year extension. Have you at least said, Hey, what we're doing for you? It's pretty nice. Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, um, that man, that man, he's the one who put us all together. You know, he's yeah. the one who, who saw the vision of what we could be. So, you know, definitely we're thankful for him as well. It, it is funny, though. It's literally every single game, which I, it's, an, it's an incredible run. I mean, the, the five games in five days. And I was reading a story that you guys were like every day coming back to the game and being like, we feel better than we did yesterday. Was that just a, a mentality that you were taking? Because there's no way at some point you, your body has to be five games in five days. You guys are just all bought, bought in like that, dude. That's just that's just the vibe around this place right now. Um, we we don't plan on quitting at all, and um, we work real hard, and we did treatment to treat it treatment the same way that we treat practice. You know, it's very important. So I think that um, we're taking the necessary steps to keep going. Yeah. Uh, so, so going through the ACC tournament, backing up a little bit, you beat Duke and you beat UNC over the span of just a couple of days. Can you power rank? Like, what are your – what's the most satisfying win? Is it beating Duke or beating UNC or maybe some other team in the ACC? Uh, I'd probably say beating UNC just because we played them twice and lost twice going into that. Um, if we played Duke twice, I, I feel like we, you know, would have – you know, we probably would have split that. So, um, definitely would say UNC because we lost to them twice. Yeah, yeah, and you, I mean the three that you hit against UNC was awesome too. Have you asked coach for more looks from the outside? Like, let, take a few threes every now and again. Nah, no, sir. I'll play my role, and if the opportunity presents, I'll take one. But um, I don't try to do too much outside of what I'm good at. So I try to, you know, do what do what helps us win. I I got a weird question for you, DJ, and it's something I'm actually weirdly <laughs> interested in. Um, you sell vending okay. machines. <laughs> yeah, I have a few. Um, I don't <laughs> sell them. I just own a few. I have two of myself. That's incredible. So how did you get into that? Uh, that was just, you know, um, there's a guy who played at Auburn named Josh Dollard. Um, he's from the Charlotte area. And we used to train with this trainer named Gabe Blair and he, um, phenomenal guys. And I was just talking to him, you know, about some things that went through and we were just talking about what are ways to make money outside of basketball so you're not like one dimensional as a person and um that was one of the things he showed me and I took after it. I I mean I love that. That's awesome. So you have you have two active right now and you just it just makes money for you? Yeah, and um I've I've showed a few friends how to do it as well and they take it a little more serious than I do now. What what's in your vending machines though? That's very important cuz like I hope it's not I'm be honest. What? I can't eat what's in my vending machine. Okay, all right, that's but, a good um, thing. Okay. All right. Yeah, don't yeah, don't get high does. on your own supply. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it does. It, it sells well for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Do you do you have uh big Texan cinnamon rolls in there? Uh, no, nah, not right now. Oh, okay. those are a money maker. Wait, do you switch it up? Do you like do a different menu every month? Not every month, but like you know, every now and then. Um, I have two different vendors, so depending on which one I go to, they have different stuff. I, I mean, we could do a whole interview. On yeah, vending I'm machines. actually. Just, I love vending. Machines I'm interested so much. in the <laughs> snack game right now. So you could also like, if you want to plug your vending machines, let people know where they can find the DJ Burns vending machines and maybe people just go to just flock oh, to them. They're just at um some schools out in Charlotte, you know, stuff like that. But um it's not it's not anything too major. I don't really I don't really I'm not in that's not my business for sure. That's just like some little side hustle stuff. It's I smart. like that. Yeah, it's entrepreneurial. And then the other one I had which you know the internet might just lie, but do you, do you play four different intru instruments? Uh I did play four instruments. I'm not as I'm not as active in all of them anymore, you know, just cuz basketball takes up most of that time now. So um it's more of something that I'll do every now and then. I I 
it's it's it stayed with me from high school, but yeah, that's not really something I do as much as anymore. What were the four? Uh, the upright bass, the piano, the baritone saxophone, and the alto saxophone. That's badass. that's a good variety to too. Be... So upright bass is a, that's an instrument that I would love to be able to play. Yeah. Yeah, I actually went into um school and they were showing me the violin and um the lady, the teacher, Miss Thompson, she was like, "Yo, you're gonna snap that thing with your neck. Try this," and she handed me the bass and I fell in love with it, man. <laughs> that's that's I mean to have that like wide uh you know depth or wide wide variety of like skills is insane like to be a division one basketball player going to the sweet 16 and have four instruments that you're you can play and also a vending machine owner yeah you might be the coolest dude in the world <laughs> hey man i hope to be one day man not there yet <laughs> america's big man that's what they're calling you right now and i i was reading your twitter profile earlier it says that your um your profile says bible books and ball the big three for yes, you sir. what's your favorite book Oh, man, I don't really have a favorite, to be honest. Um, I read a lot of books based on sports and then about God and stuff like that, you know, in my walk with faith. So um, that's mostly I'd probably say the one I'm still I'm rereading the Uncommon book by Tony Dungy right now. That's one like a little daily devotional. So, OK, stuff like that. I set you up, though. The, the answer was the Bible. Yeah, 100 percent, man. But that's that's a given. I thought you meant, like, you know, <laughs> in general. <laughs> I, I got another weird question for you. Um. I, I love the fact that you're a big undershirt guy. I feel like the NCAA tournament every year, you've always got a couple dudes that rock the big undershirts, and now they're getting tighter. You know, most people are wearing, like, the compression sleeves almost. You still rock the old-school undershirt. Um, you can go back and look at, like, Keith Van Horn, Simbular. There's just a long list of undershirt guys. Have you always been an undershirt guy? Was that a, a conscious decision you made? Yeah, I mean, honestly, when I used to play basketball, I wear a lot of long sleeve shirts and people would always look at me crazy for wearing long sleeves while hooping. But um, so I just kind of stuck to the undershirt. Now I kind of get the same ones that are comfortable so I can move around in them. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, like way to score on the court? Is it a, a dunk over someone or is it like, you know, the spin move when you get someone going the wrong way and it's just an easy layup? I mean, it, again, it's so much fun watching you play because when you have your post moves going, you just get people just turned around. I wouldn't even say I have a favorite move. I just like to react. You know, whatever you're going to give me is what I'm going to take, you know, whether that be a pass or something. But um, I'm not really looking to make spectacular plays, but I'm always trying to be smart with it. So I, I just like smart plays, people who play smart. Yeah. yeah. Is there, do you ever catch yourself? Because every now and then when we're watching your games, they'll be like, you'll throw in like almost a football move. Do you realize that? Like sometimes you'll, <laughs> you'll like, you'll have the ball and you'll just kind of throw a little shoulder and you'll be like, wait, and then you, and then you'll kind of be like, all right, I'm still on the basketball court. Do you notice that? Yeah. The thing with that is, um, I just learned that, you know, I'm going to get fouled. So sometimes I have to, you know, use a little more muscle than I would like to have to use. But I mean, if that's what I have to do to score then so be it, you know, that's smart. Yeah. And your passing is incredible too. Is that a skill that you've, you've worked on in the last few years? Um, because when uh, when I see you do like a little like behind the back or a little like look away pass, there's nothing that I like more than a big man that can pass the ball. Oh man, I just say that's something that God blessed me with, man. I I don't know where it came from or how it got there, but I've always been able to be a passer. Um, I think it just has something to do with being unselfish. That's always been me, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I have one last question for you. It's a rowback question. R H O B A C K dot com promo code take twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Uh, DJ Burns, who we're rooting for to hopefully get into the final four. We want we want to see this journey continue. Uh, is there? I, I'm rooting for you to get to the final four because then, for people who don't know, you were uh, third in your state in high school rankings behind Zion Williamson and John Morant. Pretty good company. Mm -hmm. I would like to see you get to the final four. Something those guys didn't, so we can be like, yeah, they were wrong. DJ Burns probably should have been ranked number one. Hey, man, that's that's 100% the goal. That's what we're working towards every day, man. Yeah, I love it. I appreciate it. that. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's great. Yeah, I mean, the fact that that's, you know, a trivia question, that's, it's cool. And you're the most fun to watch of the three. I'll Definitely. Right now. Definitely the most fun to watch. Yes, by far. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Right, well, th thanks for joining us, man. We yes. really appreciate your time, and, and good luck. Go Wolfpack. And, yeah, we're going to be pulling yes, for sir. you. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Oh. Wolfpack. Yes, sir. Go pack, man. DJ Burns is brought to you by Proper 12. Proper 12 was founded by a true Irishman. Dublin 12's own the notorious Conor McGregor. Make it a proper Amazon Prime time. Grab a bottle of Proper 12 for the premiere of the new film Roadhouse starring Conor McGregor. Proper 12 is a rich and smooth blend of golden grain and single malt aged four years in bourbon barrels. 
anything else just wouldn't be proper. Our guy Robbie, Robbie Fox, MMA guy, bass player in Pup Punk, went out to the premiere, had a great time. Apparently, it's a great movie. No better way to catch that than with a bottle of Proper 12 at your side. Crack open a bottle of the original Rich and Smooth Proper Number 12 or the new Crisp and Fresh Irish Apple. Mix the Irish Apple with ginger ale. Awesome drink. Great drink. You won't be disappointed. Check it out. Proper 12. All right. Uh, let's wrap up the show. Hank, any other grievances? Nope. Okay. Are you mad at me for anything? Nope. Not no, he, either of you. he picked your side. I had two. I had two. The last three months have not been great for me because Hank, when you and I went head to head, Hank went with you, and then surviving barstool. Before, remember when he was like, "If it comes down to you and Dave, I'm going with Dave." Mm-hmm. So I, I know where I stand. I didn't pick I'm third. PFT. I'm third. Me and PFT got assigned a team, and PFT forced me to take JMU. Did I force so you? That was mean of you, PFT. Contractually, did I, for, did I force you? Him. Contractually, you not, hey, done that. no, no. Now I'm mad at Hank. Oh, okay, yes. Fuck you, Hank. Because he definitely wanted to pick you, JMU. You piece of shit. Yeah, you're telling... You're, you're, I wanted to pick NC State. You're spouting fake Seriously, news. you would have yeah. won 40K? I know. Mm-hmm. Did he actually? No. He wanted JMU. <laughs> and he said it's going to be so funny when Big Cat gets mad. Oh. <laughs> so you did pick against me. That's fine. I, I, I can deal with I made that last part up. <laughs> I closed my circle. I, my kids still like me. I did. It, it, Big Cat... Shane was shooting and Big Cat was like, what's up, Shane? Only person that... <laughs> did, did, did pick JMU or like this. I was like I was like Shane I was a dark place I was like Shane it's good that I know I still have you dude and he's like yeah I bet Wisconsin I was like oh bad bet <laughs> I was like that was stupid of you uh, but yeah I know where I stand with Hank he's I'm third and might even be way lower than that I, I think he likes know. memes more I don't know he took memes off the, I've been falling he, down the charts he took memes off the pip yeah, I've been falling down the charts. It did hurt. It hurt. It is what it is. <laughs> Meme sketch is the most strays of anybody. Yeah, it hurts. He and Max have been like getting along recently because the Sixers suck. Yeah. So it's like they're yeah. both lying down on this couch earlier when I walked in. Who? Max That's and me. together. Oh, that together? Is not true. <laughs> like snuggling. What? Sixers had a big win today. They James were lying Harder down together on the couch. Six. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a weird move, That's guys. Kind of strange. Uh, no, that's not true. I was laying on the what? floor and he was just laying on the couch. Love is love. By the way, so the coach's picture, I, I'm going to write this blog after this. It's one in the morning. I'm fucked. I don't know why they release it on a Sunday. They always release it on a Monday. Didn't someone say they did the date wrong by accident? Yes. It's a news dump. Which sucks because, yeah, I, I'm fucked. But give me what, what you, just some, maybe one that jumps out to you. I, I mean, Stefanski's posture is atrocious. Andy Reid is still a boss. Andy Reid's legs st- stand out to me. Belichick's that usually, tree trunks, you know, yeah. half, I feel like half the time he's in it, when he's, when he's in it, he was always such an alpha that it was it was cool. So I was scanning it, and then when I finally saw Mayo, I was, I was like, oh, no. Yeah, this, Ger- is, this is this is bad. Gerard Mayo. He stands out, and, and probably not in a good way. He's wearing a T-shirt. Yeah. And he's big. I don't like the fact that they put all the all barrel chested. They put all the former Redskins coaches from that team together on purpose. Oh, did they? Schefter probably loves that shit. Schefter probably or he probably set this whole photo up. Wait. Yeah, you where? got you got McDaniel, you got LaFleur, you got McVay, you got Kyle Shanahan, then you got Wait, um, but who's in between McDaniel? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's someone who's that's that's a new face. Who's I think that? it might just be the fact that LaFleur and Sean McVay are friends. And Shanahan behind him and McDaniel right there. Yeah, I think you're seeing things because there's a guy literally sitting in between. But who them. is that? Who is that guy? <laughs> there's we got to learn there's someone separating them. We got to learn the. new I think guys. it's the Seahawks coach. Oh yeah, McDonald. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I don't like that. I already wrote a part of the blog. Dave Canales thinking he can go shorts next to Andy Reid. You fucking suck. He he got alpha. Yeah, well, you just can't do that. You can't be. You haven't won a game in the NFL and you went shorts. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, Dan- Kevin O'Connell needs an iron. Dan Quinn and uh, Brian Dable next to each other look hilarious. They look like the funniest either like buddy cop duo of all time or we were saying they look like a team of hitmen or outlaws or like yeah. you said uh, the the robbers from Home Alone. Yeah, they would be the Home Alone robbers if it, they're just like, let's redo it, but they're both bald. Yeah, or the, like a twenty, like a, a 30th anniversary of like a wrestling, high school wrestling state championship. Yeah, 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 true. Uh, they do look like high school wrestling coaches. I got a question because I already have – started looking at this one guy uh in between dave canales and uh what's the fucking idiot from the saints that's that's alan yeah who's that because he looks like a weird like uh like church preacher 
like a not even a church preacher, like a a church camp counselor. Yeah, he probably like an adult church camp counselor. This guy probably had the chair turned around, and he was sitting like facing you, but the yeah. chair's like, backwards. Hey, buddy, before. let let me wrap at you real quick about chastity. Let's talk some football. Who is that? Is that Cal- Brian Callahan? Oh, okay. okay. Respect. His dad's a, his dad's an all time uh, football guy. Mm-hmm. And Brian, Ka- oh yeah, Titans. Uh, Doug Peterson looks like he's had about six. Oh, he's the best. Six daiquiris every year. Doug he Peterson looks the most I've... comfortable, and Stefanski looks the least comfortable. Yeah, I've said. Yeah. I think I said it every single year, but it it stands every single year. Doug Peterson is he looks like a swinger, and I yeah. mean that in all all due respect, all due respect, because it looks like he just enjoys life. Yeah, to a certain level, it's, it kind of looks like uh, Stefanski is an uptight husband, and no, then. And then Peterson is like his drunk, embarrassing librarian wife. Stefanski's sitting like Gerard Mayo's got his fingers up his ass. <laughs> I don't know what happened, and we love Stefanski, but he's gonna get it. He's gonna have to get it. Dan Campbell looks like he's ready to fuck. Always that dude. F- is, fuck or fight. That dude. He's is, a fuck or fight guy. He's ready to go. That might be the whole thing, Mister Fuck or Fight. Yeah. Which one you want to do, brother? <laughs> and I don't care. We the, do, uh, you just you decide. The Harbaugh's next to each other. Oh, I love it. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, tough for Zach Taylor to get stuck in between two uh, former NFL players. Yeah, but you're right, man. That's Hank. That's a that's a tough fall from grace to see him in a T-shirt. He got surprised by the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't have any classic like pa- Matt Rule Panthers year was incredible. I look back. I've been doing this blog for eleven years now. Time flies. Mark Tressman was the first one. Antonio Pierce looks like a like a magician slash sex show enthusiast. Like he does a little Where bit of both. He? Where's Antonio Pierce? Last top second left, row, corner. top left. Second row, top left. Oh yeah, I see him. Okay. Yeah, he looks like a magician that like an X rated magician. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. All right, I'll, I'll be up all night, uh, but it'll be fun. Shane Gillis coming Wednesday, official. Don't worry. I feel like we've been a little transparent, but I we probably fucked up the timing, taping that right before March Madness. Uh, but yeah, that will be Wednesday, uh, and we'll talk some more Sweet Sixteen. Uh, let's finish up the show with numbers. Forty. How many bracelets? I hope you win this one, Big Cat. Wearing? Eighteen. What the fuck is wrong with you? I hope you win this one. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I do. I hope I you win. Want, I hope you win. All right, twenty. Three. Seventy-seven. Eight. Hank? 40. There's one up there. Oh, this doesn't count. This yeah, doesn't this count. doesn't count, this doesn't but count. I'm curious what that... What, what that. I'm going to wait to know what the number is. 78. 78. Oh, 78. Oh, oh, oh. Doesn't count, though. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Pick number three, my lord. Doesn't count. Forty-six. Love you guys.